Okay. Good morning. Commissioner Ed Rothstein from uh, District 5. It's Thursday, February 2nd. I'm not sure about the groundhog, but somebody told me that there's going to be like more winter or something like that. But it is Groundhog's Day uh, today, I believe. And so Puxatoni Phil either saw a shadow, didn't see a shadow, bit the handler. I don't know, but maybe we'll find out sometime. Uh, before we uh, start, as always, let's take a moment uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. To the, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under god, god indivisible liberty and justice, justice for all okay Let's get started uh, with a little bit of Priority Carol. Uh, Commissioner Vigliotti, why don't you uh, kick us off? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Rothstein. I'll be very, uh, very brief this morning. Um, I, along with other commissioners, uh, visited the health department the other day to get a better sense of what they do and how they go about it and how we can what areas we can uh, continue to work together on. And uh, just as a, a brief side note, uh, I was ill yesterday and that's part of the reason why I'm not there in person today. So I, uh, I, am, uh, I appreciate uh, your patience with me uh, doing this virtually, but I felt that it was important to, to, to do it virtually because I could. Um, and then the other point of that is that anybody who's been in touch with me over the last day or two, I, uh, I am uh, doing my best to, to catch up on calls and emails and, and comments, and so I, I pray that you will uh, uh, extend me a little more patience as I try to get caught up, but uh, that's it for me this morning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kyler. Yes, um, it, as always, uh, it's been a great week, a busy week, um, and we've, we've done some joint meetings with various groups within the county, um, Sandy Mount, Cub Pack, 395 met me in the building this week and we toured the building and talked and it was um, very interesting about a dozen kids and probably seven adults and uh, they had great questions and great talk um, the one I loved the best and hopefully that family's not listening I asked them all uh, why did you get in Scouts well one I want to be an Eagle Scout someday well I wanted to learn respect um, the last one and the smallest one goes, my mother made me, but I think it's going to work out. And I said, would your mother happen to be in the room? That's her. <laughs> so, so it was interesting, but a great bunch and, and a lot of fun. I'm meeting a, another troop on Sunday. We did do the Carroll County Health Department, and it's great to hear from them. And uh, like like so many entities today they're stretched thin and have a lot of stuff to do and and do it pretty well um commissioner rothstein and i and were involved with mako and uh we were blessed to get to uh hear the state of the state in annapolis um yesterday with um very close seats that are i think our delegation helped us with and and it's so great to go down there I think um, the better our relationship to be with Annapolis, the better off we are. Um, it's not always easy, and our local delegation, I think they really support us. We've, we've talked about some grants for like Hampstead Fire Department. We've talked about other local bills that can help Carroll County, and then with MACO, we talk about a lot of the, the bills and we don't always agree totally with their stance on it but we discuss it well and it's a, that's a great group so it's been a great week and i look forward to today's meeting awesome uh commissioner gordon thank you uh for those of you that were wondering where i was last thursday morning and not here i was actually at the uh, ribbon cutting for hexagon purist which is a manufacturing facility here in uh, the westminster area uh it was a very well attended event I uh, was fortunate to get to speak with the Director of Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies for the Department of Energy. Uh, she was in attendance as well as many other people at the event. The company is a global leader in clean hydrogen fuel storage and distribution and uh, 
It's a key technology for zero emissions mobile, uh, which will provide four high pressure cylinders, fuel storage and distribution systems for hydrogen for a variety of different vehicles, ranging from cars to other types of vehicles. Uh, the uh, company has uh, brought in 100 new manufacturing jobs to the Westminster area, as well as Carroll County, and they have a 60,000 square foot facility right outside of Westminster here. So we're very fortunate and uh, appreciative to have them as uh, business partners in the community now and uh, very happy to, to attend that. On uh, Saturday morning, I got to attend a class at Exploration Commons at 50 East. Uh, made a friend who happens to be named Pepper. Uh, Pepper is the robot, uh, humanoid robot that assists in coding. So uh, it was very interesting to uh, get an education on coding, which the type of technology they use is very similar to uh, Python, if anybody's familiar with that coding. But uh, again, a wonderful opportunity to uh, interact with the uh, people over at Exploration Commons bless you, and the uh, makerspace, and it was uh, very uh, informative, and I have to thank Amanda Krumrein, who's the supervisor for uh, the time and, and those involved with the class. Uh, and to uh, echo Commissioner Kyler, I was also involved with uh, everyone else here at the uh, meeting we had the other day with the, uh, the health department. That was quite insightful, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Garen. Thank you. Well, on the topic of the governor, the new governor, I, I hope he was sincere when he, he mentioned that he, he wouldn't forget about us out here in Western Maryland. So let's let's hope that's the case. Uh, I want to talk about my town hall I'm going to have on, on February 7th at the Mount Airy Senior Center. Uh, the doors are going to open at 6 o'clock and we're going to go from 630 to 8. So anybody watching or listening in District 4 or anybody in South Carroll in general, you're welcome to attend. Um, we're going to have some folks from the county there, and we are going to have the sheriff uh, speaking with us as well, and it looks like we're going to have the chief of police from Mount Airy's in, in attendance. So hope everybody can attend. It's my opportunity to connect with the people of District 4, uh, answer your questions, hear your concerns. If I can't answer your question, we'll, we'll get an answer and get back to you. Um, so hope everybody can make it and that the weather cooperates. We do have a back update, but I don't want to jinx myself right now on that. So, all right, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, attended the uh, Board of Education. What's going on? Six more weeks of win Oh, man. Okay. We'll see where this goes. Um, <clears throat> I think he's like 50% wrong or something, you know, but I don't know. Uh, makes him 50% right. Makes him 50% right. I, I don't know. Uh, Board of Education meeting last night. Um, they went through uh, public hearing. They have one more um, public hearing, I believe, on the uh, uh, 8th or, or 9th. Um, and then they presented to us, the county, their budget. And uh, very uh, similar to the uh, meeting that we had jointly with them, um, as far as the numbers are concerned. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, I really appreciate um, the superintendent, uh, McCabe, along with uh, the Board of Education president, uh, Marsha Herber, and uh, the entire team uh, for being very candid um, and upfront on the challenges of what the funding will provide, what, if they are not funded, what it will not provide, along with the uh, challenges that lie ahead with the um, blueprint. and. Uh, some of the knowns with the blueprint and some of the unknowns that they're still learning uh, from the, sta the state's uh, requirements um, and then how it's all going to come to us. I uh, want to be very clear um, at the end because they said, okay, this will be presented to the Board of County Commissioners for their budget. It's not our budget, it's your budget. It's the county, you know, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars, it's the county's dollars. And uh, the Board of Education and us have the opportunity to navigate uh, those dollars to be the best we can uh, here in Carroll County um, as far as uh, quality, safety, security, the best schools that we have, which are just, they're phenomenal. Um, it's going to be difficult to get through. And I was also very clear, again, that I am not promoting or saying anything about taxes except for understanding what revenue um, could um, achieve if necessary. 
but there is no promotion one way or the other. And I was very clear once again, but it seems not to resonate with some. That's okay. Uh, it is not I, it's us, and it's we. And uh, you know, I, I told the Board of Education if uh, they want to do another gathering, that uh, we should take a hard look at that and, uh, you know, do another joint meeting, you know, if, if necessary uh, and if appropriate. Um, on Monday, I participated in a rural coalition, which is part of MACO, Maryland Association of Counties. And really what that is, is uh, if you think of everything um, east of 295 and uh, west of let's say 95, so, you know, the Eastern Shore and Carroll County westward um, coming together <clears throat> and looking at legislation that affects us directly and having our opinions um, on the different legislation um, that's wor being worked on in Annapolis. The reason we do that is it helps us with a singular voice or an understanding uh, of that legislation as we go into Wednesday, which is the Maryland Association Counties uh, meetings on uh, legislation. And we're gonna hear a little bit more about that from Mr. Fowler in a minute uh, with some of the legislation. The, uh, the important piece of all of this is our voice matters uh, and we're all at the table. Um, it may be a virtual table, but we're all at the table uh, determining uh, whether we appreciate uh, the legislation, whether we support it, we oppose it, we have a position on it, we uh, have an opportunity to make a statement on it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that went well, and as uh, Commissioner Kyler shared, we met with um, Senator West and uh, Delegate Tomlinson, Senator Reedy for a short period of time, Delegate uh, Rose. Um, so it's a really good target of opportunity. Really appreciate our uh, liaison, uh, Mr. Fowler, who again will be coming up in a second, um, helping us get from point A to point B, uh, getting our steps in down in uh, Annapolis. Um, we did have the opportunity to uh, attend the State of the State, where all the local leaders were gathered on one side of uh, the dais and <clears throat> the governor's uh, administration was on the other. <clears throat> there were things that I agreed with. There were things that I did not agree with as much as what I was agreeing with. Um, I really appreciate his uh, support for our uh, military and our veterans and his intent to keep our retirees here in uh, Maryland. And he's making that very clear. Um, but he, uh, he made some very strong uh, comments that uh, I was very appreciative of. And now it's the legislation and the administration's time to work with him in uh, moving us forward. So, uh, you know, the key to all this is we do have a voice. And, um, you know, it's just not on a Wednesday, but it's every day. So, um, lastly, I'm attending what's called the Taste of Maryland. Uh, it's the agriculture across um, the state coming together <coughs> with. Uh, uh, legislative leaders and um, local leaders um, to talk about the state agriculture and uh, I'll be attending that this evening um, you know with uh, our Ag Board no our Ag Center Executive Director uh, Heather um, maybe a couple others so looking forward to that okay um, I don't see it on the agenda but I think Mr. Fowler should be coming up next so Mike why don't you come on up and uh, walk us through some of the uh, highlights happening in Annapolis and uh, thought maybe I had the day off no not quite not quite go for it good morning good to see everybody together um, let me just echo Commissioner Kyler's comments that I think meeting with the delegation personally um, is extremely beneficial. Obviously, <clears throat> they'll pick up the phone to you and you'll pick up the phone to them as necessary. Uh, but there's really no substitute for face-to-face. -face. And I think the timing of coming after the MAKO meeting means that if there are any issues that are really current and important, you know, a discussion can occur. So, uh, And I want to thank you because I feel like I'm a novice down there and 
And like Commissioner Ralstein said, you kind of get us to point A to point B, <laughs> occasionally tell us what we shouldn't do and what we should do, and I appreciate it. Well, that's why they brought me on, because I knew where the door, where all the doors <clears throat> were. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll start as we always do, 67 days remaining. Uh, we're almost a third of the way through. Uh, there was a big bill drop uh, the two days before the January 20th date which was the drafting guarantee date, about 700 bills were dropped in the two days prior to that date. Uh, so the, uh, the Senate was specifically was uh, sort of put on notice by the president uh, that there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, so maybe cool it on, <laughs> on submission of bills beyond that. So we'll see how that works out. But already up to 1,000 bills, I think is pretty significant. Um, the, uh, the next dates we have to be concerned about are uh, bills that when they are once they are submitted after these dates, February 6th and 10th in their respective chambers, they have to go before the Rules Committee. So another hurdle that has to be met. Um, uh, I want to issue a correction from last week. I said that the counties fund the circuit, uh, excuse me, I said they fund the district courts. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not fund the district courts, you fund the circuit courts. Nobody caught me on that error, which scares me a little bit, <laughs> but, but I want to make sure I made that clear. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned the Hampstead Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, Delegate Stanko is taking the lead <clears throat> on that. He's gathering letters of support from stakeholders and, uh, and working to get that back into Governor Moore's budget. It was initially in the budget that Governor Hogan uh, put forward but Governor Moore's budget does not include that item, so we're trying to get that back in, and uh, Delegate Sanko uh, deserves a lot of effort for, for uh, a lot of uh, kudos for leading that effort. Uh, there was a uh, presentation yesterday at the Mako Legislative Committee by the Department of Legislative Services Executive Director, Vicki Gruber, um, about the, uh, it was a fiscal briefing, and I, uh, I believe I passed that along to you. If I did not, I will. Uh, but you probably got an email from Ted Zaleski, who's going through it and pulled <clears throat> up some initial uh, thoughts from that. And I think he'll continue to provide you with, uh, with some more information on that. I think the one big takeaway was that, and you probably saw this in the media, but about 110, 111,000 uh, additional students are qualifying for free and reduced meals that will increase the blueprint budget and uh, and so that's going to be a, a, another challenge going forward uh, just to mention a couple of bills here senator reedy is the sponsor the senate sponsor of the the bill which is a mako initiative uh, which will direct this state to negotiate contracts for the purchase of uh, body cameras and, and all the ancillary equipment on behalf of the counties, um, including the aspect of viewing and editing and redacting, which is really, uh, an, or can be, an, uh, a very expensive proposition. So that's good that Senator Reed is on top of that. Um, and then yesterday, MAKO reached out about Senate Bill 414. It has not been scheduled for hearing yet, but it's also a MAKO initiative. Uh, creating a commission to advance and strengthen firefighting within Maryland. So this is the theme of uh, recruiting and retention. And uh, they're, they're looking for a panel to testify on the bill. And uh, when I heard that, my first thought was Director Robinson is, is in a perfect position, I think, to, to present some of the challenges uh, on retention and, and hiring. So he has agreed to participate in that. So when that hearing's scheduled, uh, we'll let you know. Um, I did want to take some time, though, this morning to talk about uh, this House Bill 161, which we've, we've brought up briefly in the past, uh, the Northeast Maryland, uh, Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority, uh, Sunset Act. So I've got uh, Cliff Engel behind me in case any technical questions come up, and I have to thank him because he's really educated me on this Actually, issue. Cliff, why don't you come up to the uh, middle as make it easier? Thanks. By the way, good morning. Good morning. Uh, 
so what is the authority? In, in a nutshell, it's a, it's a creation of the legislature. It is a, um, it was created to assist the participating counties to affect waste disposal programs on a regional basis. So it's a quasi-governmental agency. Uh, there are eight members, of which Carroll is one. It's Frederick, Carroll, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, Hartford County, Prince George's, Montgomery, and Anne Arundel. Uh, so we, we, it's a member, member fee structure, you pay an annual fee, you get the services of the authority. They do things such as write RFPs, manage contracts, um, just anything related to, to waste disposal and recycling uh, that they can assist us with. And, and really the way that benefits the county is you, it saves you from hiring people to perform these, these duties and everything that goes along with that. Uh, so you'll probably remember the controversy in the Maryland Environmental Service back in 2019 or, or 20. Um, and the governor, as a result of that, created a commission called the State Transparency and Accountability Reform Commission to look at all 13 quasi-governmental agencies, primarily on governance, because that's really what the problem was. It was about executives mishandling and misappropriating funds. So it really did focus primarily on governance and board structure and auditing and, and, and that sort of thing. So he issued that executive order in 2020, formed this commission. Uh, the commission met for a year and made their final report in December 21. So some of the membership of the commission uh, were, well, among the membership of the commission were several legislators that were chosen by, uh, by the governor and, and the legislature. So on the House side, we had Delegate Mark Corman of Montgomery County, who is now the majority leader in the House, and Delegate Kathy Shalega from Baltimore County. On the Senate side, we had Senator Brian Feldman of Montgomery County and Senator Addie Eckert uh, from the Eastern Shore. She lost her primary, so she's no longer, uh, I guess, in necessarily a uh, can speak for, for the commission. But uh, the, the two House members are the sponsor of the bill in, in question here. Um, so what, what the bill does, essentially it does three things. Uh, well, let me back up. I should also say that in the statute that created the authority, there's also a sunset provision that they can merge into, specifically merge into the Maryland uh, Environmental Service. So that's in statute. So the bill basically does two things, or three things. It, uh, it uh, First of all, it revokes their ability to issue bonds. So many of these quasi-government agencies have that authority to bond projects. So it withdraws that. Um, the second thing it does is, is tasks the Department of Legislative Services with performing an evaluation of MES and of the authority, and they spell out the criteria basically around their, their operations. Um, and then, at the same time, it directs DLS to draft legislation to merge the authority, which seems to me a little bit cart before the horse. Um, so the, the commission was made up of 21 members, or excuse me, the Environment and Transportation Committee, which will hear the bill, is made up of 21 members. Of those 21, uh, 16, or excuse me, 18 represent member counties. So I think it's going to be a very interesting process to go through. I will note there is not a cross file in the Senate on the bill. Um, so Cliff and I have been discussing this in, in a lot of detail. Um, it's, it's hard to gauge the position of the other members. Um, I've been getting a little bit of sense in some of the meetings of my peers that some of the counties have some problems with this, like we do, but there doesn't seem to be any coalescence of a position. We, we kind of think there's a split that some counties 
probably favor this. Some counties are a little suspect on it. So we thought it's important to at least to get our uh, concerns uh, to the, the committee. And what, what we've done is put together basically some written testimony on your behalf, and I've provided that to you. Um, and do you have a copy? Because I didn't bring it. But anyway, so you'll see the, the, the things that we're concerned about primarily. Um, continuity of operations is, is one. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that the, all the contracts that are in place and all the management that's underway stays that way. Um, also, there's a, there's a real cost benefit, as, as Cliff has, has indicated, that this is a, an annual, predictable, recurring cost for these services. Now, if we have to, depending on how, how this evaluation, the outcome on this evaluation, if it goes to a completely different model where we've got to somehow support these services on an individual basis or, or do them ourselves, you know, who knows? So they under, need to understand that this membership model is, is very beneficial from a cost-benefit analysis. Um, also, the counties really need to retain decision-making on this. I mean, these are our projects. Uh, we really need to be the, the decision-makers on this. Um, and also, the thing I mentioned before, that it's a little premature, I think, to to put legislation together to merge when you don't know what the evaluation will say. Now, perhaps they're taking that, that aspect of the statute that says they can. Um, what the commission said, uh, and again, because most of their work was on governance and board structure, they had an appendix and they said that, uh, that they were limited by time, so they didn't really dig into this themselves, but they said that the legislature may want to take a look at, at merging because some of the uh, duties of both organizations may, may cross. Um, so I think they're using that. Now, there's some that might say that the big issue is the authorization in statute for, uh, for the authority to develop waste to energy projects, that um, incinerator projects, for example. Maryland's current energy and environmental policy really isn't going to allow those projects to go forward anymore. There were three that were being managed in the state. The Hartford County is, I think that's closed. Um, Montgomery County is scheduled to close. And the Bresco plant in Baltimore is scheduled to close, but I think that's still in Ten flux. Um, this, so anyway, uh, so I don't think that's really an issue anymore. So I think one of the things we say is, if waste to energy really is a stumbling block here, just re, you know, remove that from statute um, and, and let's continue on. So, so essentially, that's what we're asking you to do is, uh, uh, is you know, sign a letter of testimony. We'll submit that. We have to submit it by Monday. The hearing is Wednesday. And certainly, I think maybe if you'd like to attend, I'll certainly be there to, to observe and see what, what happens. And, and go from there. So I guess I'm asking you to take a vote on on providing written testimony for this bill. Okay. Um, before, uh, well, if, if there is a motion, call a motion. But if not, um, any conversation, discussion? Is there a motion? Yes. Uh, we have a. Yeah, I move. Oh. I move to adopt this letter and yeah. Yeah. sign as, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Sign as yep. presented. Okay. Got, got a motion. Second. And I got a second. Uh, is there any other discussion? Nope. Seen here and none. I appreciate all the homework being done in preparation for this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Joe, uh, give Aye. me a thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. 5 -0. Good. So, uh, the hearing's Wednesday. Yep. I'll be able to report back what occurs, and uh, we'll keep our eye on it. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Cliff. You're welcome. Good, so, job, good job, Cliff. <laughs> Strong, silent type. That's what I like. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to kick me if I made any mistakes. So. Uh, so that's really all I have for you today. If you have any other questions or any other issues. Real quick, Mr. Fowler. So February 6th is our deadline for uh, any bills to be introduced in the Senate, correct? Well, that no, they can be introduced. They'll have to go to rules okay. if they're introduced. Sure. Um, and correct me if I just want to mention this. Correct me if I'm wrong. We've had uh, procurement numbers at roughly $20,000 for the last, I don't know, several decades, I guess, is where we've been. 25,000. 25,000? Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, and I know there was, I believe, a, an effort a few years ago where we had uh, proposed a, a, adjusting and amending that up uh, to a higher number, obviously, and that apparently fell by the wayside and didn't actually meet a positive result. At the there time. were some amendments one delegate wanted that would have really rendered the effort moot, so it was late in the session. We sort of dropped the effort. Gotcha. Um, would like to uh, move that the Board of County Commissioners request Mr. Fowler to ask our delegation to place a bill uh, to update the procurement number from 25000 to 50000 Second. Any discussion on this? Um, I, Go ahead. Go no, ahead. please. I mean, there, there is some merit to it, I think. Um, so we can take a look at what you you put together in draft and and uh, but as long as it was a as long as it's not a reoccurring you know fifty thousand dollar cost in other words it's not a well it's fifty thousand this year for the next five years that would I think change the parameters of things but everything costs more if uh, if the money's appropriated to the departments and they're spending it wisely as as we trust that they are um, do they have to come for us to for everything I don't know that's a great question. Yeah, the conditions are in statute currently, mm -hmm. so really the only thing you are changing is the dollar amount. Price tag. Right. Yeah. I, I like it. I mean, um, the, the staff does a great job in preparing uh, prior to them coming to us. And, um, you know, it's, it's executing the budget, you know, that we already have established. Um, exactly. So it's... It, it's the, the money's allocated, all we're doing is executing and having confidence what this does is provide that much more confidence in our staff, which I'm all for. Uh, and you're right, costs have gone up. So what was 25 then is a whole lot more now. So um, you being a, you know, construction, you definitely know that. Um, okay. So if I could, if I could add from a procedural standpoint, so Essentially what happens is we're asking the delegation to submit this bill on our behalf. So they would have to hold a hearing and take a vote among the delegation. Mm -hmm. I understand that they have to plan another one because some of the things that they l wanted to look at at the last meeting weren't available, so they have to convene another one. So it would have to go to them first, they approve it, then it goes to bill drafting. From that point on, it could be a challenge. So it is possible we wouldn't see it make it through the process this year. Um, but if, if it's something that's, that you want, we could certainly get it in line for next session mm -hmm. uh, where, where the process wouldn't be an impediment. Sure. I, I, again, I think it's great. So, um. yeah, and, and I agree, and I think 50 is a good amount. And, uh, and like you say, I think um, the staff works hard to do those presentations and if we are helping them a little bit and and we're helping time in meetings I think it's great and and that's what I was thinking too we're kind of late but if if that means this is more active next year that's still a giant step if it can get in this year that'd be great too absolutely okay okay uh, good discussion great initiative I believe uh, all in favor Aye. Aye. Okay, 5 0. Okay, I'll get to work. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Outstanding. Okay, okay. anything else? I just wanted to mention that on that uh, Star Commission, right. Linda Singh was a member of that commission. Really? Former yeah. 
Uh, National Guard. General Singh, Commander. Right? Yep. Yes, General Singh. And uh, just keep your ears to the ground about uh, Major General Gowan, um, the Adjutant General. He should be um, leaving relatively soon. Uh, just haven't seen who Governor Moore is selecting yet. Um, I know there's a short list, but uh, I spoke with General Gowan yesterday for a little bit. So if you hear something before I, I appreciate it. Because we'll so, I'm going to reach out to him on other issues, but um, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I, th I apologize. I think the last um, uh, uh, notice, or whatever, uh, for secretary is um, Secretary uh, of Transportation Paul Wiedefeld, mm -hmm. who is coming back to Maryland. He was the uh, MTA, the administrator, and then he was the uh, CEO of the BWI Airport for quite some time, um, and now. Then he went over to uh, Washington to run WMATA, and now he's back to being the Secretary of Transportation. So he's a friend in court and known him for a long time. So good stuff. Okay. Very good. And and you and Commissioner Rothstein both know a lot of people, but and we mentioned the delegation, but we should also mention the last two weeks we bumped into a fair number of secretaries Absolutely. and had some good conversations yeah. including them saying give me a month or two but invite yep. me to Carroll County so I, I think those discussions are great too secretary addicts yes went into him two two times in two weeks and he's looking forward to uh, you know coming up here once things settle down so yeah, yeah. which which reminds me I think I mentioned to you that uh, the young lady we met, the intergovernmental relations director, was enthusiastic about getting the governor up to the veteran celebration. Yep. She even suggested uh, combining that with the, the annual cabinet meeting. meeting. Yeah, yeah. That's on a Saturday. Yeah. At, but if the governor says you're going, you're going. So. <laughs> hey, well, we, we can accommodate uh, the cabinet at the veterans event. Right. And uh, we were more than happy to. Uh, no, that was great. And really, uh, you get the opportunity to say thank you one more time, and I think we will as well uh, to Molly um, for supporting us in uh, attendance to the State of the State. Yeah, so, absolutely. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's talk about guardrails and installing them in various locations. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> the Office of Procurement, in cooperation with Roads Operations, requests your approval to award the repairs and install of guardrails in various locations to Long Fence Company using a state contract in the amount of $14,660 for the install and $38,649.10 for the various repair for a total of $53,309.10. This amount is within the approved budget and no additional funds will be necessary. The Long Fence Company, is it local? Yes. But is is long fence a, a national and yes. that's what I thought. So are we local? Yeah. So we're using a local. Yeah. So we're. That, that's my question. I, They're I located on our Banana Pike. Okay. So they are not Carroll County, but Frederick County. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. And and I think it's inf interesting. It's on here, but some of the damages get paid through the person that damaged them when somebody catches them. That is correct. If there's an accident report produced by the Sheriff's Department or the State Police, we get a copy of that mm -hmm. and then we send it through the County Attorney's Office for restitution so they pay it back to us. Yep. The uh, County Administrator and I saw one uh, on Slacks Road guardrail. Mm. Guy uh, went up on at least two wheels into the guardrail and Fortunately, came back down on four wheels, but uh, right. Doug, were you out there with us? That was Jeff, Jeff sir. Jeff was yes. out there, yeah. Okay. Okay. Any uh, conversation on this? If not, is there a motion? 
I move that the Board of Commissioners award the repairs and install of guardrails in various locations to Long Fence Company in the total amount of $53,309.10. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, you got a motion, got a second. Any discussion? Seeing here none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 5 0. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about Maryland 911 board funding or protocol system. Okay, Valerie, we got four or five of you up here. So let's see, let's go one for one. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. So good morning, commissioners. Um, the next four items are in the, on the agenda are all interrelated. Um, we'll do two together and then another two together. So um, the first one, uh, we're here to request acceptance of Maryland 911 board funding for our protocol system maintenance uh, for emergency medical, emergency fire, and emergency police dispatch. Um, the Maryland 911 board recently awarded funding to Carroll County uh, for the proposed renewal of the protocol maintenance agreement that we have with Priority Dispatch. Uh, the amount of that funding that has been awarded to us, offered to us, is $273,000. Uh, the proposed agreement that that $273,000 would fund, if you uh, choose to accept it, uh, would provide five years of maintenance for all of those protocol systems at the platinum level. Um, and I know that uh, several of the commissioners may not have a lot of experience or knowledge about the Maryland 911 board. Um, so Jack is uh, prepared to provide a little bit of uh, information about that for you and background. Good morning. Uh, the Maryland 911 board um, uh, collects the, the, the state fee from the, the 911 fee on each cell phone. Uh, it's a currently in, in Carroll County as a $2 fee. $1.50 comes to the county, 50 cents goes to the Maryland 911 board. Uh, that money is placed into the trust fund, and then counties are able to make requests for approved items um, to, to be funded out of the trust fund. Uh, the, the protocol systems are uh, one of the main items that are approved out of the trust fund. Any other comments or questions for us on this particular uh, request to accept? I move that the county accept the proposed funding for Maryland 911 board and authorizes the director of public safety to execute the protocol system maintenance agreement with priority dispatch. Second. That motion got a second. Um, any discussion on this? Seeing here none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. And now, in cooperation with the Office of Procurement, we're turning around and going to ask you to spend that money. Yep. <laughs> the Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Department of Public Safety, requests your approval to renew the licenses, service, and support for the 911 dispatch system, which includes medical, fire, and police from Priority Dispatch Corporation and the annual amount of $54,600 for the next five years for a total cost of $273,000. As a result of the Maryland 911 Board approving full funding of the proposed project, the contingent upon the Carroll County Board of Commissioners' acceptance of the same, no additional funds are needed to proceed. Okay. Now let's spend the money. <clears throat> Move that the Board of Commissioners approve the renewal of licenses and services and support of the 911 dispatch system from Priority Dispatch in the amount of $273,000. Second. Got a motion, got a second. Any discussion on this? Seeing, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, you Commissioners. Recording systems. The next issue. Uh, our next item on the agenda is uh, a similar nature where we will be asking you to accept funding and then immediately uh, spend it. Uh, this I one is a little bit. One second. I have the two bridges and give them my book backwards. I have the procurement one first. You might have the same. Uh, yeah. What we're going to do is accept the award. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah, this, the, the last one, 
That, that's right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, it's very confusing. It's all very similar. Nope, it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> very hard. No offense to staff putting the agenda together. <laughs> and this this item is a little bit more complicated than the last one. Uh, the priority dispatch was very straightforward. This one has a little bit more complication. Um, this one we are coming to the board to uh, request replacement of the event logging recorder for the 911 center. Uh, the logging recorder for telephone and radio transmissions in the communication center is in need of replacement. Uh, the current equipment has reached the end of life and can no, can no longer meet the reliability requirements that the communication center has and is not capable of supporting the recording needs of next gen 911. As we move into the future, next gen 911 is where we are. So the total cost for replacement of the system by Carousel Industries is $384,141. So that includes $308,805.75 for the portion of the system that is applicable to telephone operations and $75,335.26 that is applicable to the radio traffic. <coughs> Um, implementation of the proposed uh, system includes tw five years of 24-7 support. So the Maryland 911 board recently awarded uh, Carroll County funding for the portion of the proposed system that is applicable to telephone. Um, that is the only portion that is eligible. I'm sorry? Telephone. 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 Okay. The, oh, that, that's right. Yes. You're good. Okay. <laughs> the 911 board uh, uh, funding is only eligible, the telephone piece is the piece that is eligible for 911 board funding. Uh, the radio portion is not. Um, that's just the way that the 911 board operates. Um, so the, we were recently awarded funding uh, for the $308,805.75 that is applicable to telephone <laughs> transmissions. Uh, so that is a portion of this project. Uh, we've identified Emergency Management Performance Grant, American Rescue Plan Act funding. Uh, that's been, uh, we've been identified that to be able to cover $20,694.82 of the remaining portion, so that radio portion, the portion that's costing $75,335.26. So that leaves $54,640.44 uh, to uh, be covered to finish out the remainder of the the needs for the project um, the avail there's no uh, the approved budget does not have available funding for that remaining cost of fifty four thousand six hundred and forty dollars and forty four cents so as part of the overall project um, we need to request a budget transfer in that uh, amount of fifty four thousand six forty forty four to be able to proceed so, as I mentioned, a little bit more complicated on this one than the last one. Okay. And what we're really trying to do is stay ahead of the curve, uh, make sure that because the, the existing system is 13 years old, correct? It's Jack? 10 years old. 10 years old, okay. End of hardware Excuse and software me. support. Um, it is experiencing um, operational issues and there's no um, no way to correct those without some sort of upgrade. Okay. Any questions on this? So, first thing we do is request to transfer the money, that 54000 and let's see if we can spend it, right? And we also need to ask you to accept the 384,141 from the 911 yes. board. Okay. okay. Oh, I'm sorry, 308. Yep. Looking at the okay. right here. Lots okay. of numbers on the paper. My yep. apologies. 308 875 mm -hmm. Okay. I move that the county accept the proposed funding for the Maryland 911 board in the amount of $308,805.75 and authorize a budget transfer in the amount of $54,640.44 per resolution. O dash twenty three dash or dot zero four. Second. I got a motion, I got a second. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing here none all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Okay. 
The Office of Procurement, cooperation with the Department of Public Safety, requests your approval to purchase a new Ventide 176 port resilient recording system for the 911 center from Carousel Industries in the amount of $384,141. This system will be purchased through a State of Maryland contract, Department of Information Technology contract that was competitively bid and awarded to Carousel Industries. This contract has renewal options of up to five years for essential support, 24-7, 365. This cost, the cost of this purchase will be covered by a combination of funds, including the Maryland 911 Board, EMPG ARPA, and county funds already contained in the approved budget. No additional funds are required to proceed. Okay. I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the purchase of a new Event Tide 176 port resilient recording system for the 911 center from Carousel Industries in the amount of $384,141. Second. We've got a motion, got a second. Any discussion? It's in here, none. All oh, please. What, what, yeah, one question. and. The last motion and this motion are the exact same dollar amount. Is that just one heck of a coincidence? It's intended, it's we're, we're moving money, we're moving. then we're spending it. So okay, we're, so so, so we're, we moving, we moved the money, yeah, we're now we're spending right. it. Right. Now we're gotcha. Spending. Yeah, we had we had to accept it yeah. and yeah. move and, it, and and, and, and now, now it's the total spend. amount, yes. not yes. the pieces. That's correct. Gotcha. Yes, that's correct. Right. Accept right. and transfer and then execute. Yep. So, yep. <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion? It's in here, none all in favor? Aye. 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 Give me a Thank thumb there, much. okay. We got, we got Thank five. You. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Now, let's talk about Hutton Street 21 LLC. We're in a piecemeal rezoning petition. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, you will now sit in your quasi adjudicative capacity and you will listen to a public hearing uh, concerning a piecemeal rezoning petition that was submitted by uh, Hutton LLC, Hutton Street 21 LLC, and it is concerns about approximately a little less than two acres of land on, on uh, the north side of Liberty Road, Maryland 26, approximately 150 feet from Georgetown Boulevard. What they're looking for is a, uh, a change uh, from our residential zoning or residential 20,000 zoning to commercial medium C2 zoning. So you will sit as quasi judges and you will uh, listen to all the testimony that you hear from uh, the planning department and the uh, applicant and then there are citizens that will uh, be given a chance to, to weigh in after the applicant. So just is it quasi or quasi regardless? Go ahead, Ms. Linda. It's today, Thursday, it's quasi. Tomorrow, okay. it's quasi. <laughs> Just curious. Uh, first up, we have, uh, you've introduced us, and we will uh, give you a presentation from our, our planning staff. Uh, this matter has been heard by the Planning Commission. They made a recommendation, and they have a report to uh, submit to you. All right. And with the applicant, we have uh, Clark Schaefer is representing the applicant. May I, may I enter, may, good, good morning. Clark Schaefer, 73 Main Street, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, look forward to presenting uh, to you today. Are we going to put the witnesses under oath in accordance with the pro procedures? Of sure. Uh, anybody who's going to stand, uh, please testify. Anybody who's going to stand testify? Do you swear or affirm that all the testimony that you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you all. Let the record show everybody stood. And let's hear from our planning department. All right, good morning, commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Burke, for the introduction. Um, as he said, we are here for the public hearing for Hutton Street LLC. This is rezoning case number 229. We have a staff report prepared for you. We briefed you on some of this when we came to request to go to public hearing. Today, you'll receive the full staff report along with the planning commission recommendation. We have allotted about an hour, give or take, um, for this proceeding, just so you know within your time frame, um, because it is a quasi-judicial hearing and this will have um, witnesses being brought up as well. So with that, I'm going to have Hannah Weber from our department who mm -hmm. processes the rezonings give you the full presentation with the planning commission um, recommendation. 
All right, thank you, Linda. Good morning, everybody. Before we get into the actual details of the rezoning case, I want to say that this public hearing was advertised for a consecutive two weeks in the Carroll County Times. Here is the newspaper ad. And then I also placed two public hearing signs on the property along Maryland 26. And then we also sent adjoining uh, property owners, highlighted in pink, a letter notifying them of the um, public hearing today. So with that, locating ourselves, the property is inside Commissioner District 5 in the Freedom Designated Growth Area. We are located just north of Maryland 26 and east of the Georgetown Boulevard and Liberty Road intersection. The rezoning request, as um, Mr. Burke introduced, is 1.931 acres of R20,000 to petition to rezone to C2 commercial medium. And the applicant is arguing that there is a mistake in the current zoning designation. This property is split zoned between C2 commercial medium and R20,000. So ultimately, if this rezoning is approved by you all, the entire parcel will be rezoned to C2 commercial medium. So at the beginning of our process, we send the rezoning petition out I, to- I apologize. Sorry. To the left of that. Yeah. Is that also C2? Correct. Where- um, I think it's no, no, Starbucks. I apologize. Uh, yeah, that's Starbucks, yeah. but mm -hmm. all of that property, that's all C2. Correct. Correct. Okay. All yeah, the, the frontage. Is C, all the red is C2. Okay. Oh, oh, and C3 the is, later red and C3 is left of George. Correct. Correct. Okay. And that's yeah. the more burgundy color. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yep. So we sent this transmittal out for agency comments, and here you can see the agencies we sent the transmittal to. Um, I will note we sent the transmittal to the Baltimore Metropolitan Council and we received no comments. We re uh, sent this to them because it is inside the Liberty Reservoir. And that's part of our reservoir technical agreement that we have within the Baltimore Metropolitan <coughs> Region. Yep, and we received no comments from any agencies. So getting into the arguments, these are the applicants' arguments. I'm only gonna hit the high points of what they submitted and they'll obviously get more into detail at their turn. So the petitioner alleges a mistake in the original zoning. The current slash existing C2 zoning line splits the property and goes through an existing commercial structure. The petitioner alleges the R20,000 zoning designation on the back portion of the property was adopted because of the mistaken belief that a strip of land existed at the back of the property, which would provide future access for residential purposes to the back portion of the property. This access strip, while mistakenly shown as existing in the tax maps and zoning maps utilized by the county, does not and did not exist at the time of the most recent comprehensive rezoning. Um, moving on, the R20,000 portion of the property as currently zoned is virtually unusable in that its only access would be via a residential driveway from Liberty Road leading through the commercially zoned property that fronts on Liberty Road. And lastly, the existing C2 zoned property is less than 180 feet deep, meaning that it is not deep enough for the development of a reasonable planned commercial project on the property. So those were the applicant arguments and these are the staff conclusions. So staff believes there was a mistake in the last comprehensive rezoning and applying the R20,000 designation due to the information available to staff. At the time of the last comprehensive rezoning, the Department of Planning believed that the 0.2 acre strip did exist to the rear of the subject property. This strip was thought to provide residents of the R20,000 zone portion of the property if it were to be developed with more connectivity to the surrounding area. The strip does indeed not exist and was consolidated into the two northern properties in 1971. At the time of the last comprehensive rezoning, there was an existing fuel station and car wash on the C2 portion of the property and this car wash and fuel station is still on the property. If the R20,000 zone portion of this property was developed residentially, the only access would be a driveway onto Maryland 26 through the commercially developed and commercially zoned portion of the property. Because of its limited access, the development would contradict planning principles. 
So some more detail on this strip that is discussed in the applicant arguments and by staff. You can see it is represented in this green box. And despite it being shown on all county tax and zoning maps, it does not exist. It was consolidated into these two northern parcels in 1971. And the tax and county zoning maps uh, were used during the last comprehensive rezoning process that was adopted in 2021. And we work with State Department of Assessments and Taxation now knowing this to correct this issue. That is who we get these maps, the tax maps from, and then our zoning maps follow that. Excuse me, just, just for the record. Why don't we let them finish there? Uh, but I'm just going to say that's Linda Eisenberg is talking. Um, you know, okay. we're on the record here. It's a kind of a weird uh, oh, atmosphere. Okay. It's, uh, sorry. I, okay. Thank you. Yes, Linda Eisenberg, Thank Director you. of Planning. Go Thank ahead. You. So that's um, kind of it for the details of this rezoning case. Um, since we are getting closer to you all making your final decision, the Annotated Code of Maryland states that the legislative body shall make findings of fact that address population change, the availability of public facilities, present and future transportation patterns, compatibility with existing and proposed development for the area, the recommendation of the Planning Commission, and the relationship of the proposed amendment to the jurisdiction's plan. To date, um, on December 13th, the Planning Commission gave this rezoning a favorable recommendation to you all. We came to you all on January 12th with an introduction and request to go to public hearing. Today, obviously, we are here for the public hearing with staff and applicant presentations, discussion with you all, and then public comment. And if you are ready for a decision today, you all can obviously make it. And we also have time scheduled for next Thursday if you're not ready to make a decision today. Um, as of now, we've forwarded all of the public mm -hmm. comment we have received to you and the applicant as well. The record does close at the end of this hearing today. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Do we have opportunity to ask questions for the board presentation? Have, any questions of staff? I, I have a couple questions. Uh, so this property has been zoned C2 at least going back as far as 1981? It was originally zoned BG um, before the creation of the C1, C2, C3 districts, but that would, the BG was in 1965 at the adoption of the original county zoning. Okay. Which is and the front portion. Yeah, just the front portion. I know, I know we're not in, the, in the, the, the site planning process by any means, but do we have any idea what the intention of this property is going to be? I believe the applicant is here and can give some more insight okay. into what that will be. Yeah. I'd be curious to know that and, and how the potentially the access to that parcel would be okay that's it for now thank you and just um you know all, all c2 needs to be comp contemplated because there is no plan in place um mm -hmm. and it hasn't been approved and even if it was that can always change until it's built so you have to consider all c2 uses when making this decision mm -hmm. correct any other questions for planning Commissioner Viglii, do you have any questions at this time for planning? Um, so the zoning in 1965 had the front portion as BG and the back portion as residential. Correct. And then you threw out 1971 or something to that effect. What, what was that? Yeah, that is um, the... Um, strip of land okay. shown here, that is when it was consolidated into these properties to the north in 1971. All being residential? Correct. Okay. Um, Walnut Ave is a uh, um, no outlet. Mm -hmm. Is there a plan for Walnut Ave to extend or is it to stay as a no outlet? Stay as it is as it is um, and is Walnut Ave um, it's all R20 at this time I mean, it, it, except not, it, for it is the the part that fronts Liberty Road except for the part that yeah. fronts Liberty mm -hmm. Road um, goes okay and there's housing 
on the left side or the west side of Walnut Ave. Oh, actually, on both sides. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, all the way through to the no outlet. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, to me, it's important to see the entirety of the, you know, not not just one parcel, but how things fit into the community. Um, Absolutely. And the um, the C two property where the the Starbucks and mm -hmm. the sushi and everything else Oscars, uh, which is doing really well, um, <coughs> has that reached its capacity? Do we as know? far as as far as growth, do we know? I mean, the property can always be redeveloped. Yeah, um, okay. I, I guess, and I'm I not sure the fair. leasing. Um, what their lease rate is right now. I mean, it seems pretty fully occupied. Yeah. Um, and the property was just um, resubdivided in the upper left hand portion here uh, about two years ago for um, what's that, a Popeye? Yeah, I think it's Popeye's. It's Popeye's yeah. is there. Yep. And the snow, uh, snow right. cones there. Yeah. And that's the most recent development and um, some entrance and exit, ingress, egress um, upgrades along Georgetown have occurred on this Correct. particular site. Correct. Um, unfortunately, there's a sign that's down, and it's been down for a while, but that's a different story for a different time. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know this area, you know, I won't say very well. I know it, I know it well. So, um, okay. Uh, yep, no, no questions anymore for the uh, for two of you. Yeah, please. Um, and can you put back the slide you just had? So... This is one parcel, and it was split how it was zoned, is the only legal access off of Route 26. Correct. That's the only legal access yes. for the entire property. Yeah. Okay, you can see you. the entrance on the aerial here. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Discussion? Okay. Um, does the applicant have any questions of staff? Yep. Yes, if I may. Um, I'd like to apologize in advance for being lawyerly because it's, it's an on-the-record opinion uh, or, or proceeding, and, and in, under those uh, rules, nothing occurs to anybody unless it occurs on the record. So, uh, so I apologize. And I assume Commissioner Vigliotti, I saw him on the screen, he's, he's, uh, he's listening. He's, uh, yep. He's participating he is. Uh, virtually. Okay. Absolutely. Um, He's just excited. There's no three minutes. Yes, um, there's no three minute clock. Uh, <laughs> for when he well, Commissioner Rossi knows how to handle me anyway. I, I am. I am here with, for with you. He doesn't need a clock to handle me. Um, <laughs> and I would like to move the staff report into evidence, if I may, uh, so that it's part of the record. Uh, is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Miss Weber, H Hannah, yes. if I may. Uh, it's also true, is it not, that the existing zoning line runs through a portion of the existing building, uh, lo commercial building located on the property? That's correct. All right. So, uh, and is it, do you believe it's credible? I, I, I apologize. Can you put that map back up yeah. since mm -hmm. you're referencing the map so we know what you're actually saying? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You prefer this map or the aerial? Wh whichever one that you believe can describe okay. what um, Mr. Schaefer is asking, so we all know <clears throat> what line. Maybe, yeah, maybe that was the right order. The first one yes. showed the red so. and yellow. This one shows that that the one building is definitely this back is there. Correct. So if you look the at the reason. corner here to the west, take that corner straight across. Okay. That is the back line of the zone. You can see it goes through the back portion of that particular building. And, and what is that building? Do we know? That is the convenience store located on the site. Mm -hmm. the gas station convenience yeah. store, car wash. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm holding in my hands what's been marked for identification as Petitioner's Exhibit 7. This is a copy of the uh, a plat that was submitted with the petition. Um, this this will clearly show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I may. Do they have that in front of them? Zoning lines. This black, heavy black line. I think it says an exhibit. The building outline is. You can see it comes through the back of that building. Yeah. 
It's just small. Yeah. And the building is, comes out like this. And just, uh, I, I apologize, Commissioner Vigliotti, we will provide you the details um, that Mr. Schaefer is sharing with us uh, away from the table, so. Excuse me to Commissioner Rothstein, this is page seven of the staff report that has been submitted to you all. So you should have this in front of you. Just a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Um, it, it, okay, if, thanks. If, if, mm -hmm. My turn. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, Hannah, is it, did the, did the staff and the Planning Commission find it credible, uh, Petitioner's argument that the strip of land that we focused on appeared, mistakenly, appeared to provide access to the residential por zone portion of that property from Walnut Avenue? Correct. And that that mistake was explainable by the fact that it was shown on the zoning maps and the tax maps as a strip of land uh, that looked wide enough for a driveway or a roadway, correct? Correct. Okay. And that, that, do you know how long that was in existence? I mean, it was probably before 65, wasn't it? Do you know? I believe the subdivision plat that you submitted with your petition said in the 50, 1950s. Yeah. Okay. And I'll have some testimony on that later today. Um, all right, now I just have a couple questions for Linda Eisenberg, if I may. Uh, Linda, you're the planning director for Carroll County, are you not? Correct. All right. Um, in your opinion as a professional planner, is commercial zoning appropriate for the back portion of this property? Um, I think at this point it could be appropriate. Okay. Well, your staff report goes into some detail yes. on that very question, does it not? Yes, it does. Uh, the second to last paragraph in the staff report uh, uh, talks about the, 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 the limited uh, access, right? Uh, it is bad planning practice and contradictory to planning principles to develop this portion of the petitioned area residentially as it currently lays. Is that your opinion? Yes. That okay, is thank you. Now, if even if this is this rezoning petition is approved by this board, and the rear is rezoned to C two, or at which time the whole property would be C two, correct? Correct. That doesn't mean that any development has been approved on this parcel, does it? No, it does not. It doesn't mean that any redevelopment has been approved on this parcel, correct? That is correct. And what can you just? briefly describe the process that any commercial redevelopment would have to go through? It's, it's a site plan review process, correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. And that involves a review of all environmental agencies, all regulatory agencies, State Highway Commission, et cetera, correct? Yes, it goes through our technical review committee. All right. And that, um, that redevelopment would have to comply with all modern environmental codes, correct? Correct, as well as the county code. Okay, yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. Yep. I think um, just to add on to that is length in the process from start to finish in doing it, it that. can be several years just right. depending um, how long it takes between the applicant and the development review team that's typically the next question you would ask so okay um, okay what else do you have uh, I, I have witnesses you ready absolutely I believe so right okay. mr. Burke uh, mm -hmm. I call, so call Stacy Schaefer. Can she come to a microphone? So, do you want, um, do you want to bring your people up to the yeah, table? Yeah, Linda, fine. Hannah, why don't you back okay. out? Yep, that's fine. Um, and unless you need uh, a map on the screen, it's up to you. No, no, so thank can, you. Uh, okay. Right there's good. Yeah. Stacy, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Good morning. Stacy Schaefer, 73 East Main Street, Westminster, Maryland. All right. Are you a lawyer licensed <clears throat> to practice law in the state of Maryland? Yes, I am. And you and I are married to each other, are we not? We are, in fact. All right. <laughs> and you're under oath here today, are you not? I am. Has it been Here's a long and happy point. marriage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, strike that. Strike for her. Strike that. I, strike that. Um, so much we could say right now. So, <laughs> so much. <laughs> It's rare that you can get them under oath. I'm just saying. Uh, um, Stacy, your your practice uh, over the years has been in the area of 
significantly of title work. Is that correct? That's correct. And that involves real estate and real property title work. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Have have I asked you to look at uh, the land record situation regarding this uh, uh, strip of land that we've talked about here today? You have. All right. And wh what have you did you did you find that that strip of land uh, was consolidated into uh, the adjoining parcels I did. at some point in time? I did, yes. I'm showing you a copy of what's been marked as Petitioner's Exhibit 1 for identification. You, what is that? That is a copy of the tax map, which is accessible through the SDAT website, which I, in fact, did a little screenshot of on January 19th, and it shows that strip. So it's still, the tax maps is, is, is still showing the, the mistaken strip, correct? Correct. All right. Um, I'd like to offer that into evidence as my exhibit one, petitioner's exhibit one. Tim, you've got it already. I'll just, I have four copies. So. Okay. Perfect. Um, I don't have four copies of all my exhibits, but I got four copies of that one. Um, now, when you did your title re research, uh, did you turn up uh, an old subdivision plat? Yes, I did. All right, and that's been marked for identification as petitioner's exhibit two, correct? Correct. Now, with reference to that petitioner's exhibit one, is that strip shown on that old subdivision plat? Yes, it is. Now, you, you went f further into the land records and, and looked at deed work, et cetera, um, and, and you, you found that that was consolidated into adjoining properties. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, I'm showing you uh, uh, petitioner's exhibit four and petitioner's exhibit five. They are copies of deeds from the land records, are they not? They are. What do they represent? They represent, and I'm going to look at each one of them in turn. So Petitioner's Exhibit 4 is Deed 353, page 684. And that is the deed consolidating parcel, what is now parcel 33 on the tax map. So if you look at the tax map, you'll see two parcels. One is sort of a vertical orientation and the other is more of a horizontal orientation. And um, so parcel 33 was consolidated originally in 1962 and parcel 109, which is the horizontal, my notes are correct. Yes, the horizontal <coughs> sort of lot, that was consolidated actually back in 1954. 54? Correct. So 54 and 62, that parcel disappeared as far as the land record world knew, right? Correct. And as far as the zoning world knew. Did you, did you, uh, did you look further and do you know why that, do you, can, you, can you surmise based on your research what that strip was originally for? Um, the original, the old deeds, when you look at, sometimes old deeds can be a little arcane when you're looking at them, but there's language when I, so let me backtrack a little bit. When I do title work, what I do is I look at, I start with the most recent deed, and then I trace that title backwards in time. So I did that with each of these two lots as they currently exist, trace them back in time to the point actually prior to when the actual subdivision plat was done. And I believe, even though it may not have been recorded until the 50s, the, the date on the plat is 1947. So we're talking some time back. So that's my process. I look at all of those deeds. And so in those deeds, when they were referencing these particular lots and that particular strip, they refer to it as a well strip. I don't know what the purpose was for, whether it was for access for a well, um, or what the intent was, but there was never any reference on that plat or in any of those deeds to that being for a right of way or for a public street or anything like that. Um, and the actual old plat, if you look at it, has laid out other areas that are clearly to be streets, one of them now Walnut Avenue. So if that had been the intent originally, it would have been identified as thus, but it was identified as a well strip um, and so that was then, I guess they decided, the developer decided at some point that they didn't need it, and so they conveyed that area to those two adjoining 
parcels of land. Okay. Now, in fact, if you had a micro, uh, uh, um, what are those things that you use to mag magnifying glass? Magnifying. If you had a magnifying glass, you could take this plat and you could see the word well written at the uh, bottom end of that strip, couldn't you? Yes, you could. If you've got it up there, you can see it says, if you look carefully, I don't Tiny. know how good your eyes are, but it says well on there. And there was actually a subsequent um, notation in some of the deeds that the well area itself was a 12 by 40 foot strip. Um, and that was also conveyed to the adjoining that adjoining lot as well. So now I'm showing you what's been more for identification as petitioners exhibit three. Is that your title chain that you uh, uh, use as part of your work product yes, when you're looking at this? That's my title chain for the two lots, which are now just parcels. A, just a, 33 and 109. So chain. All right. Um, all right. Like I'd like to move into evidence. Uh, petitioners exhibits uh, one, two three, four, and five, please. They accept it? Yeah. And once again, it doesn't happen we unless you say seen, it does. We've only physically seen, I think, one, two, and seven at this point. Well, he's got them. <laughs> oh, okay. You wanna, I mean, I, I can hand them I, to I, No, I'm, I'm just saying you showed us the seven, and we physically have seen one and two, so if you're referencing them for our you know, edification, um, you know, I mean, if they're relevant for us to look at now or you want us to have the continued conversation, I, either way. No, yes, I'll, I'll they're, 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 they're accepted. They're, they're, they're deeds and you're okay. welcome to read them. Okay, if, if they're referenced from what you said, they're, you know, accepted, but if they're relevant for us to physically look at, to consider. Well, that's, up to that's up to you, but I'm going to give them to you because they're okay. here. Yep, the, so they're, they're, they're accepted. We have seven. Well, seven is the big. Seven is the big. It's probably because it was too big. I'm sorry. Right. And, right. in the staff report. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Burke, we, we, we can accept them into evidence. It yeah. doesn't mean we're saying what they say. We're, we can just accept that just documents into evidence, correct? That's right, yes. Okay. Yeah, and again, I my, my only point was, you know, Yes, we're accepting it, but if you want us to look at them as you were describing them, cool. that's a different. Yeah, and I'll and I uh, I'll use that for the uh, graphic type things. Uh, and if you want to see anything, obviously okay. you're the boss. Yep. Um, all right. Um, let me just see here. Did you also uh, look to see whether or not? there was any reservation of an easement or right-of-way uh, retained over that strip when it was consolidated into the neighboring lots? Yes, I looked at all the deeds in the chain of title for both of those parcels, and, and there were no easements reserved on either. So that strip is now part and parcel of two residential lots in the Eldersburg area of Carroll County, correct? Right. Okay. And, and I'm sorry, but and you said no right of ways, no rights were preserved. No. It's just part of the property. Right. Okay. And thank you. And that's um, that's all I have for uh, Ms. Schaefer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. May she be excused? Absolutely. Good. Thanks, thank Stacey. You. Absolutely. I call my next witness is uh, uh, John Lombardo. Oh, a minute. Morning. John, state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is John Lombardo. And I'm with the Hutton Real Estate Development uh, Company, and we're located at 736 Cherry Street in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. And, uh, John, is, is, what is Hutton? Is it a real estate development uh, firm? Uh, yes, it is. It's a commercial property management company uh, that also develops uh, uh, commercial real estate. Okay. Even though I'm asking the questions, address your answers to these guys, please. Um, now, uh, is Hutton the contract purchaser of 1.931 acres on Liberty Road? Yes. And that's what we're talking about here today, correct? Correct. And, and did Hutton, after they contracted uh, for this property, discover that uh, the, the zoning line ran through the existing uh, building? Uh, that is correct. And, and of course, you also discovered that the rear was zoned R20, correct? Correct. All right. Now, uh, is Hutton's 
uh, intent, uh, uh, if this is granted, to develop a to redevelop the property as a car wash. Uh, yes, it is to redevelop it as a car wash. Right. And does Hutton have twenty or thirty of these car washes around the East Coast? Uh, we have currently over 64 in our portfolio up and down the East Coast. Right. Now, is, is, is this property appropriate for uh, your use in, your, in, in Hutton's opinion? Uh, it is. It's ideally uh, uh, preferred because it's on a major commercial highway. Um, it has, you know, uh, utilities. Um, it's got a very well-developed surrounding commercial area. What's the current use of the site? It's currently a uh, fuel station, convenience store, uh, and car wash. Right. Uh, would it, if if Hutton were to get the rezoning and redevelop the property, uh, would the existing uh, building be demolished and removed? That would be the plan. Yes. Well, not only is it the plan, that's what would occur, that, right? Yes, we would demolish the, the structures and develop a brand new facility. And would that involve the removal of any underground tanks uh, on the property? Yes. And um, is, Hutton, is Hutton aware that it would have to go through the site plan review process that Linda Eisenberg summarized uh, earlier this morning? Yes, we do know that. Now, at, at this point in time, Hutton has cons looked at preliminarily whether or not a car wash like the one you use would fit on the uh, uh, commercial portion of this property, correct? That is correct. Would it? It can be fit uh, within that property, yes. You, you mean if the, the whole property, if it gets rezoned R20? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you'd need more land. You couldn't put it on the front piece, could you? No. Right. Um, and however, right now, you're not sure how your exact building envelope and queuing line and everything else would work on there, are you? We would, uh, through the site plan development process, uh, you know, uh, fine-tune uh, a test fit that we have, uh, fine-tune a test fit that we have, I'm sorry, uh, gentlemen, um, to uh, uh, comply See, with all setbacks and other ordinances from the county mm -hmm. and uh, and municipalities. So your your engineer who will testify next has made you aware that Carroll County has landscape setbacks, stormwater management regulations, uh, roadway dedication requirements, et cetera, correct? Yes. But you're not sure exactly how that would affect your proposed development, are you? Uh, not at this time. All right. Are you pretty? Are you are you very confident at this time that you will not need, nor nor would you desire to extend the the actual commercial act of use back to the far back of the property? It's uh, yes that uh, we're confident that we don't need the entire uh, parcel to do the redevelopment. In fact, you developed a little sketch plan showing what you think could be a car wash on there, did you not? Yes, we did. All right, and you had a community meeting with uh, the net. You sent letters out to the neighbors and had a community meeting, did you not? Uh, yes, we did. And did you share that sketch plan with your with the neighbors? Uh, we did. All right. Um, I'd like to show you what's been marked for identification as Petitioner's Exhibit Nine. Is that wait a minute? That's, yeah, that's it, isn't it. Yeah, that's that's the sketch plan you showed, right? That is correct. Well, Tim, you've got that. Can I borrow yours? And Sure. It's okay. Need a chair. <clears throat> now, once again, you you understand that that's just a preliminary sketch plan that you tried to take a look at, correct? That is correct. All right. Um, you don't know whether the planning commission would approve that or not, do you? I don't. And you don't know whether you do. Do you realize you would have to do stormwater management to support any redevelopment? Yes. Is it, does it appear likely that you would need to use the rear portion of that property to fulfill those, some of those stormwater management and landscaping requirements? That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Uh, after you purchased the property, did you, re did you come to realize that the R20 portion of the property has no uh, access other than from Liberty Road? Well, we haven't purchased the property. Oh, excuse me. At, 
after you contracted to purchase a property, did you realize that? Yes. All right. Um, now, have you then, did you then uh, ask your engineer to take a look at what would be involved if you, if the owner or you were to develop the R20 portion at the rear as R20? I'm sorry, rephrase the question. Did you, did you ask your engineer to take a quick look at what, how an R20 development on the rear portion of this property would look and would affect the front portion? Uh, yes, we did. All right. And you, were you informed that Carroll County requires all residential lots to have fee simple road frontage on a public road? Um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly if I heard it in that, those terms. All right. Well, I'll ask Mark Zimmerman okay. about that. All right. That's fine. Uh, I come to a point where I guess this is my problem, but I could get him to testify about how the car wash might operate, but I don't know that that's direct, you know, you're, you're looking at a rezoning here. If you wanted to hear that testimony, he's here. Uh, uh, number of employees, you know, usual hours of operation, that kind of thing. But I'm going to skip that for now, and if, you, if you're interested in it, uh, we'll come I mean, back. Can I are, are, are you done asking? Question? Go ahead. Yeah, my, my, my concern would be... I, I apologize real quick. Are, yeah. are you done? Okay, good. Thanks. Um, my, my concern would be we're looking at rezoning. There's testimony today under oath on what's going to go there and, and how it might be built and used. Is any of that binding to the property once it's rezoned? No, he's not asking you for a car wash. He's asking you for a rezoning to the C2 zoning. Yeah. Now, and and whatever's nice allowed on the C2 what the zoning. use might be, but it's... These are his intentions. I, there's no reason to doubt that. But yes, yes. Th those yes. are his plans, but th th he is not bound by those plans. It could be a storage facility. Mm. Nothing. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> um, a couple direct questions. You've contracted the property? You're under contract We're under a purchase sales agreement, uh, yes. We're under contract. Okay. Um, are you aware the current um, gas station and car wash, the stormwater management that is already there and in place, would it not be sufficient for what you want to establish? I'm not sure if... Um, able to uh, testify to that okay. question our engineer will be next yeah, that that's fair um <clears throat> in the 64 car wash you said 64 on east coast something like that uh, yeah we have over 64 yeah. uh, currently um they're probably relatively the same model you know shapes and how you do them um some are probably tailored more than others on property because you only have so much property what's the i think minimum um acreage that you need or size to have a functional prototypically um one to one and a half acres has been uh, common in our portfolio and you said the intent is to um demolish the the existing uh, existing structures. buildings structures and take out the tanks yes um do we know what that c2 property is right now as far as size yeah i think it's on the it's on the i imagine we do i just don't know so just the c2 portion yeah know. just just the c2 portion <coughs> it's got to be somewhere but the staff report Commissioner Rothstein, when you have a moment, I have a, I have a question. Oh, I, absolutely. Um, but point seven. Point 0.7 is roughly point 0.7 uh, acres, seven tenths of an acre. Point 0.7. So you would need anywhere from point 0.3 to point 0.8 acres to have an existing. And if you, you know, said you can do it on one acre, then you really need point 0.3 to make it one acre and then the stormwater management um 
that is common. I mean, we would, uh, based on the geometry of the, of, the, of the respective parcels, when I testify that typically it's been one to one and a half acres. Uh, some, we have lots that are long, some are wide, but um, you know, we wouldn't normally need about one acre to, right. you know, to do a minimum type layout. Because the existing property right now has appropriate ingress egress right on to 26 you know the way it exists right now um and it's 0.7 acres so as opposed to the request to asking for that much more um the uh do you have any um car washes uh in this region uh, no, we don't. We do have uh, two other Maryland uh, mob washes operating, but they're in the eastern shore okay. of uh, yeah. Maryland yeah, yeah. in Salisbury area. Um, do we know, uh, and again, I don't know the stormwater management of the existing property right now. Linda, do we know that? Or I, I, don't, I can find out for you, but I yeah. don't know where so, do, it goes to currently. Yeah, I, th I think that may be relevant where that stormwater management, so if we don't need to reinvent the, the wheel on that, that may be something that, and again, maybe the engineer would know. Um, but, yeah, I guess um, okay, uh, I, I'm still thinking, but uh, Joe, uh, excuse me, I apologize, Commissioner Vigliotti. You have uh, questions? What, uh, no, no worries at all. I guess I guess I kind of have like one question. There's there there are a couple different parts to it. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, Everybody's you're good. good. All right. I, again, I want to apologize for not being there today. I'm getting over a uh, over an illness, and so thank you for your uh, your patience with me. Um, so I, I know that we're talking about uh, rezoning the property as C two, and I understand that the intent is for a car wash, but but we have to you know that's not a, that's not how we're proceeding we're proceeding with this as as the fact that it, you know the property itself would be uh, reclassified as c2 so I, I guess my my question is you know how long do car washes typically stay in business uh do they expand in size over time do they expand in scope of what they offer over time um and in relation to that i mean what other what are some other examples of businesses that would fall under c2 classification because if we're considering this from a perspective of changing the classification you also have to keep in mind that the business that's there may change over time as well whether it's the business itself or whether the business itself completely changes it's something completely different than what the intent is now so uh commissioner figliotti for the the second question is more on us and i believe uh Ms. Eisenberg can provide you and all of us the spreadsheet that shows what is permissible uh, and then also what is conditional in C2 properties. Um, and that would be, that's definitely fair um, for us to know because it is a, a list and it's a, a spreadsheet or a, a check in the box type of, and, and she can provide that um, because it's, it's a handful of, you know, uh, um, facilities that can go into a C2, but definitely a relevant question. As far as uh, the car wash though, sir, um, the question about the length of operations of a car wash in your experience? I understood the question was what's uh, historically or typically how long does a, uh, a configuration of our proposed development um, you know what's what its life cycle is or what mm -hmm. it's yeah you know, um i you know we're a new organization in terms of this model um but i want to say that when we develop assets um that you know we'd like to operate them for you know over 20 years in order to get our return on investment okay yeah i mean i i think i i appreciate that question because again it's not a determination on whether we are allowing for a car wash where a determination on whether we are going to be allowing for a rezoning <clears throat> of uh, residential to a C2, which would then allow for your intent. But uh, sharing what your intent is makes it, I'll say, easier, but um, understand more understandable in you know what we're looking at. Um, 
Are there any other, or I apologize, are there any, uh, well, other questions um, that want to be asked? Sir? I'm sorry. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Vigliotti's question okay. about C2 zoning, is uh, that something that can be answered now, or did you say that somebody Yeah, answered? well, so, no, no, we, we can get it for us, and uh, uh, Ms. Eisenberg can get it printed off for okay. all of okay. us gotcha. to have in hand. Um, but bear with me one second. Um, Commissioner Vigliotti, go ahead. Well, thank you very much for that. Just a, just a brief uh, follow-up on the, the other question that I asked about uh, car watches, not just with the life cycle, but over time. I know, Commissioner Rossi, you were questioning, uh, or asking questions about the amount of the property uh, that would be uh, necessary for, for what's being envisioned to car washes uh, expand in size over time for example do you add additional bays do you do you find that that you know maybe instead of just the car wash you end up off for building like a i don't know, like a small mini mart or something that that would uh, you know work in conjunction with the the car wash or is it that you know once you establish the the basic footprint that's what it is for the next 20 years thank you uh, the uh, the mob wash uh express car wash uh, model that we used and we've been developing throughout the country um, does not have multiple bays that would be expanded. It is a uh, tunnel car wash where the customer uh, enters in and exits. Um, and um, so uh, there is no plans to uh, expand the, uh, the square footage of the, of the buildings for uh, other um, auxiliary uses. Uh, it's basically our business model is just exclusively to do an express car wash. We're not planning on, um, you know, opening up a small mini convenience store within the store. Uh, it's basically just we provide a car wash uh, uh, experience for the customer, and that's it. No detail services. Uh, no detail services. Correct. And you, you called it something else besides a car wash. I said express uh, express car wash. Well, I thought you said Ma Wash or something. Oh, Ma Wash is the brand. I'm sorry that Ma I represent. Mod Wash. Mod Wash. Yes. M A. M O D Wash. Okay. One word. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. I just you, you said it a couple times. I was trying to pick up. I apologize, uh, Commissioner Garen. Uh, just a real quick question, actually, for probably Miss Eisenberg. Uh, I mean, I appreciate your willingness to discuss the possible use case for this, but it is a good point to make that it could end up being anything. Um, it could end up being something that's loud. It could be something that's bright. I mean, we just don't know. Um, hours of operation, that it's like backing up to residential neighborhoods. I mean, those are all going to be concerns. But I just want to, uh, Ms. Eisenberg, just one quick question for you. That there, we're not looking at a scenario at all here where we could end up with two C2 zoned parcels. Am I, am I right? Just want to ensure that is the case. It's kind of an off the wall question, but we're already talking about one portion that's zoned C2, and then we're talking about R. So we're talking so this about this is one. currently one parcel. Okay. So the additional C2 would then make the entire parcel in conformance with the C2 zoning district, but would not create a new parcel. All right. Just wanted to clarify. That's all. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, any, uh, I think, uh, Jim and, uh, Linda are going to be providing us with um, what is uh, allowed on C2 properties um, in, in just a second. So that, that'll be good for our edification. And again, uh, Commissioner Vigliotti, I do know it is online. And um, what uh, they can do also is send you the link to where it is specifically so you do see it. Um, you know, uh, uh, really easy it's it's a pdf i'm sure that's online thank you so okay um okay are there i appreciate that thanks very much you gave one to mr schaefer why anyway okay any other questions uh for john sir i, I yeah, do please mr lombardo as we sit here today you have no idea how much of the property you'll be required to use to satisfy the environmental codes, do you? 
I don't. You, you do, however, have a good faith belief that you will not uh, uh, put a, uh, a structure, you know, out of the ground in the rear portion of that property, correct? Uh, that is uh, correct. That's not my understanding that we would need to do that. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Sir, do you have any existing car washes that are on 0.7 acres at this time? I don't know the answer to that, but I, will, I, I don't know the answer. To that. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and that's for maybe the engineer would, or uh, I, I'd be curious because I, I do know, again, you know, in some urban areas, you do what you can with the limited space you have uh, to make things happen. And, you know, I'd just be curious to be able to meet your needs in property that already exists may be a solution so okay okay um any other questions mr burke you have any questions no no questions okay thank you very much call mark Sir? zimmerman please john you vacate so mark can come up with okay? that or you want to slide over either yeah. way Mark, state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Mark Zimmerman. I'm with Morris Knowles & Associates, uh, address 443 Athena Drive, Delmont, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, are you a licensed engineer in the state of Maryland? I am. Where'd you go to college? Uh, Penn State University. Right. Have you been practicing uh, civil engineering uh, since then? Yes, for what, over about 20 years. About 20 years. And have you worked mostly on commercial sites? Yes. Right. I'd like to ask that Mr. Zimmerman be uh, qualified as an expert in the area of civil engineering. Absolutely. I'm not sure what Penn State had to do with it, but I like <laughs> it. So they're, just saying, I mean. Hey, they're well they're, they're well known as a questionable engineering school. I know well, that. More, more importantly, they're very well known as a pretty top-notch wrestling team, wouldn't you say? <laughs> as they crushed Iowa, but go ahead. Not as good as South Carroll. Uh, well, okay. Keep ready, going. Ready to beat St. Joe. Um, there you go. Uh, so, Mr. Zimmerman, uh, you've heard, you've been here this morning, heard the testimony, correct? Correct. So we're not going to go over the fact that the zoning line runs through the existing building, uh, mm -hmm. because we know that. Now, when, when we found out that the rear, that the, that we had this issue with the R20 in the back, and uh, did, did we ask you to take a look per, very preliminarily at what kind of R20 development could uh, occur on that rear par parcel if it weren't rezoned? Yes, you did. Okay. And I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as Petitioner's Exhibit 8. And I have several copies of this. Two. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Yep, we're good. Now, does does that show three R20 type lots it uh, does. outlined on the back of that property? It does. All right, and there's side. And you looked at the Carroll County Code uh, uh, at least preliminary before you did this, right? I did. All right, and so those lots are more than twenty thousand square feet, correct? Yes, correct. Um, they're wide enough to meet the minimum standards, correct? Correct. Um, how do those how will those lots would they would they access Liberty Road by virtue of a required fee simple driveway that is correct because the code requires a 30 foot wide fee simple strip to serve uh, these three subdivided lots correct correct now that 30 feet you 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 contemplate that that would be on the uh, west side edge of that commercial property correct yes in line with the existing access now, if that 30 feet were, were if, if in fact the R20 was developed and their driveway was off of Liberty Road, that would be 30 feet that would be subtracted from the available commercial frontage of the C, C2 piece in front, correct? That's correct. Leaving approximately 130 feet of commercial frontage there, correct? Yes. All right. And, and would that... 
do you do you even know at this point whether that driveway would be available to be used as part of the commercial entrance or would it be a joint entrance commercial and residential uh, i'm not 100 percent certain but i would assume it would be joint okay you don't know if that would be allowed do you i do not all right um The county has uh, restrictions on uh, use in common driveways that are fairly uh, extensive, do they not? They do. And this would be a use in common driveway, correct? For yes. the residential? Yes. Are those found in section 155.031 and section 155.039 of the Carroll County Code? It is. And that's the, where they require the 30-foot strip, right? Yes. Also, they talk about slope easements and other things that need to be accommodated as part of any use in common driveway, correct? True. So is it possible that that the area needed to use that put that driveway in would be wider than 30 feet yes All right. is it also uh, in terms of the stormwater management which uh, uh commissioner rothstein uh, pointed out um do you you do you know when that the existing gas i'll call it a gas station but you all know what it is convenience store gas station car wash do you know when that gas station was built you have any idea i i do not All right do you know whether stormwater management regulations have drastically changed in the last five years 10 years 15 years i would say within 15 to 20 years uh to now they have drastically changed all right and have they become more onerous more comprehensive more restrictive absolutely and do they require you to use more of your land to accommodate them yes for instance in the old days you could do wet ponds here and there right yes no more right right <clears throat> do you believe in your opinion if this if if the residential was developed in the rear would it render virtually the front piece uh, unusable for uh, reasonable commercial uses yes it would right. why just be too small yes All right. did, I mean you could probably fit something on there couldn't you <laughs> Uh, I mean, a to snowball me, stand or a, a oh, kiosk yes. or something, Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. Right. Yes. Now, in addition to the uh, uh, zoning restrictions, well, not, not strike that. The zoning also has restrictions on setbacks from your property line, correct? Correct. I think that's 10 feet in the C2, right? Yes. So you take that 30 feet, then you take 10 feet off of that, right? Correct. Now, the, the codes also have landscaping requirements that apply to any commercial, specifically required any commercial use that's located adjacent to residential, correct? Yes. And that's, I think it's a 15 foot, right? That is, that is correct. All right, so you'd have to meet that also, right? Yes. And all that restricts your, your building envelope area, correct? Correct. All right. Does, is it possible that you will need to use a portion uh, of that rear parcel property for uh, landscaping and stormwater management oh yes yeah behind the current gas station now you you were you at the community meeting i was okay um so has hutton uh, made clear to the neighbors that participated that they would work with them in any way possible to address their concerns with regard to that common boundary line they have and in fact uh, um, uh, right now you're not sure what that might look like because you're not in the site plan process correct correct and you don't know one person might want a six foot chain link another person might want a 12 foot stockade right you don't know true if, if true. there were a fence that was desired or required um, the landscaping requirement is pretty heavy for uh, shielding uh, or buffering uh, residential, is it not? It is. Commissioner Rusty really already did this, but I'm going to ask you, describe the general area this is located in. in the commercial uh, it's area it's a commercial area up and down Liberty Road. Okay. And then, of course, this this property is does butt up to the residential that's next to it and behind it correct yes did hutton ask you to try to sketch out a proposed car wash plan that uh, minimized impacts on uh, neighbors yes nevertheless the one you came up with does go back approximately do you know how far further back it goes in the existing zone line 130 I mean, feet or so yeah something along there 
All right, so your your sketch plan shows that it would go that the car wash would extend back about 130 feet further than the existing car wash on the property, right? Uh, from the existing zoning line. Oh, existing the, zoning line, yeah. which is right near the end of that car wash, although it goes through it, right? Correct, correct. Um, and you will, you will need to meet, Carroll County has queuing requirements for any kind of drive-through process, right? They do. And what's queuing, what's queuing mean for those? Um, queuing is stacking for drive through Starbucks, things like that. There's a certain number length of cars that they require to be queued or, or waiting, um, so they don't stack out into the roadway. Um, you viewed the site. Uh, you're familiar with commercial. Is this site site ripe for redevelopment? The entire site? Well, the, the, the existing site. What's yeah. on the site now? A uh, gas station. <laughs> and a car wash? Yes. Yeah. Well, you've been there and seen it? I have. Does it look like it's ripe for redevelopment? It does. Does the owner think it's ripe for redevelopment? I believe so. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'd like to offer uh, my Exhibit 8 into evidence, please. Okay, what is it? Uh, what is it? Oh, it's the, uh, it's the one I, it doesn't the one have you on The one you just provided us? I apologize. Yeah. I thought we did this already. Yeah, nope, yep, yeah, got it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> That's all I have for Mr. Zimmerman. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? I um, I got a couple. Uh, does the owner believe it's ripe for redevelopment? <laughs> well, I I would think so since it's under contract to be sold and redeveloped. I mean that's what uh, I can't remember John's said earlier. So. I would think so. The property is not surrounded currently by <clears throat> residential. Uh, it is um, south of residential, but to the uh, east and west is commercial, correct? Yeah, I, be yeah, I believe so, yes. Right. I mean, because you got the, the Starbucks on one side, and I can't think of what's on the right side, on the west side, but it's, it's commercial on both sides. Yes, yes. Um, um are you familiar uh if there are mod washes that could fit in the existing property as c2 um i've worked on a, probably about 30 maybe a little more than that of uh -huh. these and uh it is not large enough to the existing c2 zone is not large enough to support a, a mod wash car wash what would it typically typically take, in your opinion? Uh, in, in general, uh, turning movements are a big factor. Um, you, as you come into and out of the car wash, you want to be lined up. And we look at an F-250 crew cab mm -hmm. to make those turns. So uh, this is about uh, what, I, f I forget what exhibit, but that's, a, that's generally the limit of the turning movements to allow stacking as well. Okay. So therefore, Typically, size property. Uh, I would. Uh, I can attest to John to that one uh, acre. Okay. To yeah, I would. Five. Okay. Minimum one acre, uh, but generally that may be too tight depending on what all is in, is involved, including stormwater, which in general you like to do above ground for environmental purposes, uh, cleaning and things of that nature. Right. Um, okay. Commissioner Vigliotti, do you have any uh, questions, comments at this time? Okay. Gentlemen? I have none. Oh, okay. Thank I, you. I, you may have a follow-up? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, with regard to Exhibit 9, that's the one where you uh, showed the sketch of the car wash, right? Yes. And that you, turned, you talked about designing it for the F-250, et cetera, correct? Correct. Now, that, that design criteria slash restriction 
is really driven by the width of the property, is it not? It is. Right. And and the width is of the C2 is narrower than the R20, correct? Correct. But you show that you could meet your design criteria by using the front portion of this property, correct? Yes. Now, if you if you if this if you would have looked at this and this property would have been all C2, is it possible you would have moved the car wash further back onto the property and used the rear, the wider rear portion of that property? It is possible and put the vacuums up along the roadway, which is what Hutton prefers to have the mm -hmm. vacuum stalls in front of the car wash. Yeah. And Hutton, uh, the, the mod, the mod wash is a th three to four employees express wash, no detailing, right? Correct. All right. Um, but you need to provide parking because you're going to have uh, the ability of somebody to vacuum their car out on the other side of the building as shown, correct? Yeah, that is correct. And that was thoughtfully done, was it not, with regard to the uh, the, the property owners? It was. In, in other words, you tried to put that on the far side. Yes. Now, you don't know whether the Planning Commission or the is going to like that or not when you go through the process, do you? I do not. Right. And, and the other thing you took into consideration, was it not, is that the direction of the car headlights, in, in the event they're headlights, is is designed not to be facing the residential, correct? That is correct. So they'll turn, because if you would have put, you could have put the, the line on the other side, the uh, west side of the property, right? I could. Uh, but you didn't. Right. And, and that was at the direction of Hutton, correct? That is correct. Because Hutton knew there were going to be residential lots back there, correct? Correct. Okay, that's all I have for him. So thank the, uh, you conversations you had with the neighbors um were were the two of you together um me and john yeah yes okay so yes. it's easier just to ask uh sure <laughs> one than than both but um the overall sentiment uh when you met with the neighbors um i would say mixed okay in what way uh in my opinion yeah okay <laughs> that, that's what i'm <laughs> I, I just for. <laughs> I know. um in general it's being thankful we're not looking at using the entire property and moving the car wash to the rear uh, but obviously there's an existing field there which they've um, appreciate having and we're looking to possibly take some of that for the car wash okay um, what were some of the concerns that they came up with um, in general it's uh, developing behind the property um, and, and what they have currently as an existing field, which, again, we're looking to take. That that was the main concern. Yeah. And noise, you know, things of with a development. What, what you would expect. I mean, yeah. okay. Um, okay, and, and we're going to be hearing from some regardless, so. Yes, And we've absolutely. also gotten some feedback. Uh, and I apologize if I've mischaracterized that, but that was my opinion. No, no, it's all good. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. Commissioner Kyler? Yes, and, and, and I think it's great. I, I don't want to belittle the fact that the engineer and the owner are working with the community so well, but mm -hmm. again, my question, if you looked at this site as is entirely zone C2, you could put the car wash in the back. You could add detailing. You could stretch it out. You could do a lot of things you're not doing in this case to hopefully work with the neighbors. Is that, that correct? That is but, correct. But in theory, if if you sold the property, it could happen. Correct. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. one follow-up. I'm sorry. No, please. Well, in fact, you're aware that Hutton has even floated the possibility of gifting some land to property owners if if it doesn't make it so they can't comply with the codes back there is it, do you, are you aware of that i am aware yes thank you yeah and that that actually um was where i was going as well and i'm not sure if it's you or john uh is best to answer this is um in looking at the entirety of the property uh is it it's all one lot instead of purchasing the entire lot purchasing a portion of it or like you said gifting it or something where you're not going to be committed in using uh the entirety of the lot um yeah i i'm, I'm 
That is probably John Lombardo. Yeah, I, I feel so too, and yeah. it wouldn't be you. May, um, may John, he come if, back up? Yeah, if I can John. ask that, that'd be great. Take that mic right there, John. John, you're still under oath. Did you hear? Yeah, you understand what I'm asking? You understand what he's asking? Uh, um, would you consider, yeah. would Hutton consider gifting if it, some of the, some portion of the rear part of this property, as long as it didn't make it so they couldn't comply with the car wash as proposed? Yes, that is correct. We would be uh, able to discuss and entertain options, however they might work Talk out. However those them. options might work out. In uh, fact, John, <laughs> you, you noticed when you got your survey work back that there might have been some encroachments, uh, et cetera, right? That is correct. In other words, neighbors using the property and putting, but, but that didn't concern you because, well, concerned you because of, but it, you don't intend to develop that area, right? That is correct. That we kind of communicated that in our neighborhood meeting uh, that evening on, I think it was December twelfth, mm -hmm. and uh, I, we were trying to describe what you know our desire was in terms of, of the redevelopment, and okay. was not to go the entire width of the property or depth of the property. Yeah, width or depth. Yeah. Okay. And um, okay. Yeah. That. That, that's fair to know. Um, okay, thanks. That's all I... I apologize. One, one more since this brought that up, and I'm not sure who should best answer it. If this is all Zone C2, this piece of property as is, can it be further subdivided so a portion of it could be gifted or sold or whatever to somebody else? The answer to that is yes. Um, it would have to be an amended subdivision plat that would add it on to somebody's lot, yes. yes. But but he could indeed follow his hopes of giving it and splitting the property off. Yes, it would it would it would qualify under the Carroll County subdivision regulations. And that be determined prior to a decision on whether we're going into a C two or maintaining it as residential? No, because we don't know what the site plan um uh, requirements would be uh, you know when right. when okay. Martin Covington gets hold of our stormwater management calculations we don't know what he's gonna say be nice <laughs> <laughs> okay yep right. okay um, any uh, other questions gentlemen yep Miss Eisenberg so so we're talking about the site planning process a little bit which is a little bit premature uh, can you remind everybody here in the room what our involvement in that is so they can start to think ahead perhaps? Sure. So uh, the Board of County Commissioners has no role in the site development process and review. That is strictly through the Planning and Zoning Commission and they follow the county code of uh, laws and ordinances for subdivision and site plan as well as the zoning code as well. Um, and to follow up on your question about the stormwater management, um, the existing stormwater would not be sufficient for any division, additional development. Um, the existing site has an infiltration trench on it currently, so it would need to meet modern standards and have all new stormwater for that site. So it's not that it, it, it it's not that it would not be suffi sufficient for additional. It would not be sufficient for any redevelopment. Correct. Okay. Correct. So all new stormwater management. All new stormwater management would be required. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Discussion? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that, that concludes my presentation, except I'd just like to be sure that exhibits, petitioners exhibits one through nine are, are uh, in evidence. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. As well as the planning staff report. Thank yep. you very much. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. You, you can okay. stay here because at this point, uh, oh, okay. At this <laughs> point, it's it's appropriate to take uh, any public comment on, on the proposed. Absolutely. So, gentlemen, why don't you? Um, why don't you go? Go back. Yeah, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Schaefer, you stay because you have the opportunity to also ask Thank questions. And, and in this case, <clears throat> uh huh, they can. They can do public comment. They can question people also. If they have questions, yes, they can raise them as part of their public comment. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Does um do we don't have cards, do we? 
That's good. Okay. So why don't we just go uh, front to back? How about that? Um, yep, please. Please take your, your, your name and address. Hi, uh, good morning, commissioners. My name is Linda Chador. I live at 6231 Walnut Avenue. Thank you, go ahead. Yep. Um, first, I would like to draw attention that not all of the community was invited to the community meeting. Um, I don't think that was fairly um, presented to the board because there was only a few of the neighbors when discussing it with my neighbors that were invited. My side of the street, to my knowledge, was not invited. Um, I apologize one second. We do not have a timer on this. No. no. Chris, okay, so the... Chris, please take away this timer. and. It's up to you whether you're comfortable standing or sitting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to draw attention to that, that not everyone in the community was invited to the meeting. Um, my house is currently across the street from the house that um, backs where the Sitco is. Um, I'm right behind where the dentist office is. So I'm very, very close to where the potential development would be. And I was not notified at all of this community meeting or had any input or ability to have any input in that process. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, I think one of my biggest concerns is that we don't necessarily know what could potentially be put in the C2 <coughs> lot once it's made. Um, I know there is proposed development for the car wash, but, and um, I think Commissioner Vigliotti had a good question about what other potential businesses could go in there. And yes, they think they might have a 20 year lifespan, but for all we know, like there's multiple other options that it could be as a C2 um, prep, sorry. <laughs> and if the car wash doesn't work out for whatever reason, if they don't meet the environmental or anything like that, it's already zoned as a C2 and any other potential business could go in there and we are concerned with noise and um, increased traffic. Um, I have four children, ages six, nine, 13 and 15 or 16, sorry, she just turned 16. And they all go to Eldersburg schools. Their bus stop is right at 26 and Walnut. The current entrance to the property that's in discussion, there's no deceleration aisle in order to get in there. That, that spot is very dangerous as it is. Um, and my children stand at that corner in order to, ha to get on the bus. Yeah. Um, and so I have concerns if there's any sort of increased traffic. There's also a center turn lane and getting in and out of our street is hard enough as it is. Increased traffic would make that even more dangerous, um, especially with their children being at the bus stops, you know, six times a day between the high school, middle school and elementary school twice a day. Um, it sounds as if the proposed, um, is be due to a mistake as th that it's residential. And obvious, I don't have any, um, I don't have any personal um, understanding of all the planning and all, all the laws that go into that. Um, but it was brought up that that green piece of strip that was um, added into those two parcels was um, brought up by Mr. and Mrs. Schaefer be as that it was just meant to be a well strip. So it sounds as if the original planning by Carroll County to have it be residential, it was never planned to have that be a, a road to begin with when the original subdivision plans were um, supported. So um, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason that Carroll County decided to make that property residential. Um, I have concerns about noise. I have concerns about um, the amount, I saw the plot for the potential car wash and the way that the line queues up would be right behind the properties of my neighbors, and which is across the street from me, but like it would be right behind their houses. Um, there's lots of children in our neighborhood. Um, the, my biggest concern is the amount of traffic near Liberty Road, though that was the biggest thing that I'd like to bring up. Um, the community meeting, as far as my, my neighbor will talk more about that. Again, I was not invited, which I don't think is um, very professional, in my opinion. Um, but it, we would like to have enough of a buffer if this is to be developed 
um, and to be heard. But I think it's it would be fair if all of us were to be invited in the future if there are any sort of talks like that, if this were to be resumed. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. Just give, give me a, a minute. Mm -hmm. um, are there any questions that want to be shared? Um, and you don't know why you were not invited. You believe it was just limited on who the invitations went out to? I, I was only just made aware of that. Um, okay. It, okay. There was a couple other of our neighbors that are here, and they weren't invited either. Um, we, we know about it because Jen Crawley was invited. She was one of the neighbors that backs up directly to the commercial property. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure. All of the pink on that one, um, there was a, a list of all the pink. We were invited to this meeting, right. and we were made aware of it, um, but we were not made aware of the community meeting. Right. Um, the bus stop, just so I'm clear, it's on Walnut and 26? It's on that corner? Yes, and okay. it's very dangerous as yeah. it is. Yeah. The people blow past the buses all the time, and if yep. there's any sort of increased traffic, yep. I mean, my, my little guy's getting off. He's six years old, yeah. and that's... No, I, I got you. And, um, and I'm very familiar about the suicide lane there as well. And yeah, I've been really talking scary. to SHA about working on um, getting medians uh, from day one since I've been here for four years. And I, I don't like it just like you don't. So um, I And there's also that. even just people going into the Sitco station as it is now. Um, for, well, for one, there's not that many people that go to the car wash. So I don't know why there another car wash would think they would be a better business option. There's also you know at least five other car washes in the area um so again one of my concerns is if it doesn't make it as a car wash because there are car washes everywhere it could potentially be any other mm -hmm. type of business um and i know they would have to follow all the ordinances of the county i do understand that but there are you know residents that are butting up right against the property right. okay. um but when the where the starbucks and everything is there is a deceleration lane in order to be able to slow down and safely get into the plaza where Oscars isn't everything, but the Sitco, there's there's no way to slow down right there. Um, I've personally seen and heard many accidents right along my street to the point where I come out and like help people that are th that in Long Meadow, the street next to me. Right. That area, it's so dangerous as it is. So if there's any sort of increased traffic um, due to a bigger business, whether it be a car wash or anything else, um, that's my biggest concern because there's really no other way to have a bus stop for our street because there is no outlet. A bus cannot come right. down our street to be able to safely pick up the children as it is, so. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Schaefer. Yeah, um, I, I'm sorry, your last name? Chador, C-H-A-D-O-R. Mrs. Chador, um, I can tell you that Hutton asked my office to prepare a list of adjoining property owners for the community property, community meeting, and you weren't a community property, or you weren't an adjoining property owner, so that was my my thing um, and it is what it is that's what mm -hmm. we did uh, um, now however you you were aware you've been aware of this proposal for months now right I've been aware of this meeting the first um, notice we received was January 18th so it wasn't that long no you came to the Planning Commission did you come to the Planning Commission consideration of this no you didn't get down down in the basement room no. okay thank you that's all I have okay yeah uh, one second ma'am um, will a traffic study be required during this process, or is that really up to State Highway because of the location of this property? Commissioner, I'm 90% qualified to answer that question. Uh, there will be a State Highway access permit required or review, I think, although there's an existing entrance and it could be there. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's not an access D cell required, but who knows. Um, as far as traffic study, there's criteria in your ordinances for when a traffic study is required. I think it's 25 peak hour trips. Uh, below 25 peak hour trips is no. 25 to 50 is maybe. 50 and above is yes, get one. And you're right, it does, uh, there's, there's two entities you have to deal with, State Highway and Carroll County Engineering on a project like this. So both of them would be weighing in on any traffic study. Okay, any questions? Commissioner Vigliotti, anything? No? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Please. <clears throat> Hi.
Hi, my name is Jennifer Crowley. I live at 6226 Walnut Avenue. Um, I just want to say I was in attendance at the plan at the planning meeting at the gas station, and I don't agree that the reaction was mixed. We were all very uncomfortable, not in favor of this. Um, and it, it, frankly, we were a little upset because we were giving our feedback, things that may make us more comfortable with the idea of this proceeding. And until I said something, no one was writing anything down. It kind of felt like they were just, you know, placating us. Just, you know, that was my impression of it. Um, so um, I just wanted to point out a couple things. Uh, building businesses that close to our homes is going to decrease our property value, which is going to extend to all residents of Walnut Avenue, Cherry, and Elm. So um, that strip of land that was referenced, from what my understanding, is that it was consolidated in 1971. Someone willingly disposed of that land, essentially landlocking that property, the field. So I believe there's been two owners since that happened, and I don't, I don't necessarily believe that they were not aware of the zoning, because if it's been since 71, why would they not have petitioned for rezoning until now? Um, but the most important thing, like as uh, Ms. Storr mentioned, is the safety of our families. Um, you know, uh, recently, a family on the corner of Walnut and Elm were the victim of a break-in to their shed. I sent in footage yesterday for you, for you to view. I'm not sure if that made it to you. Uh, building any businesses any closer than where Oscars and Popeyes and Franks, where those businesses are, it's only going to increase that kind of criminal activity. I don't, I don't think it's, you know, it's already pretty close as it is, so I don't think it's best to be any closer. Um, you know, many of us have children, and we're, gonna, we're not going to feel safe with them walking to and from the bus stop and playing in our backyard. You know, none of us are going to feel comfortable in our backyard if it's essentially turned into a car wash or any other kind of business. Um, as I understand, they are arguing that it, it's a mistake in the mapping, but the board is not compelled to rezone the property, even if it's found to be a mistake. For the safety of our families, I am r respectfully requesting that the board disapprove this proposed rezoning. Okay, thank you. Let's um, first see, are there any questions from us? Um, and just let you know, every, and this is for everyone, <clears throat> if a, uh, an email went to the commissioners like yours did, um, you can be sure that we all received it. And um, all those emails also found themselves down to Ms. Eisenberg and planning. <clears throat> and those emails that were also pertinent that went to individuals, uh, we do our best to ensure that all our colleagues do see them and it goes through the same process. So your comments uh, mean something. Thank you. Um, and they don't go on deaf ears. Um, okay, sir, did you I have do, a I do, Ms. Crowley. Um, subsequent to the community meeting, you had additional follow-up uh, uh, communications with Karen Hutton. Yes, did I did. Not? Yes, I did. And Karen Hutton's the CEO of Hutton, right? Yes, and that correspondence has also been forwarded. And you to sent the it in. That's why yes. I know about it. You sent it to the commissioners as, as, in the comment. Now, in that, you apparently, Karen, well, not apparently, Karen Hutton said she would consider gifting. Is that correct? Yes, which was the first I had heard of that. Okay, and and you you live uh, on one of the lots directly adjoining uh, the, the the this property, correct? Yes. And um, your lot's about seventy five hundred square feet, correct? I would say so. Yes. You bought around two thousand eighteen. Yes. And you've lived there since then with your family. Yes. Right. And you use some of that property for your recreational purposes, right? With the permission of the gas station, we were allowed to put the swing set a, a little bit over the property yeah, and line. And that's, I mean, I'm, there's no problem, it's just that, uh, and, you, and, you, and you also have, have mowed a little lawn area out there, right? My husband mows a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a little rectangle, it looks like 
it's an extension of your backyard, right? Yes, he mows a path so that when we walk over to the businesses on the other side. Got you. Um, okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, who wants to go? Commissioner Rossi? Oh, I apologize. Yeah, Commissioner Vigley, I. And then this wasn't a question to anybody in particular, but so I know earlier it had been mentioned um, that uh, Hutton was, was quote, willing to give property to neighbors. Uh, phrase had just been uh, uh, said that uh, there's consideration of being willing to, to give property to the, to the neighbors. So I'm just curious, where exactly are they on that? Is, is, it, is it basically a, a promise in becoming, or is it still an up in the air hypothetical that, well, we may or may not give property? I mean, I'm just curious about what, what the actual position is on that. I, I, it's up I, in the air. I, I appreciate that, Excuse Commissioner me. Vigliotti. Um, yeah, so if you want to speak to it or uh, the CEO, either one. I think I, it's up in the air, Commissioner Vigliotti, because until we get into the site plan process, we're not sure how the codes would affect us. For instance, we're required to have a 15-foot landscape buffer along their property, the pe two people or Mrs. Uh, Crowley's property line. Now, there's a bunch of ways to tackle that problem. One, we could, if, if it worked, we could gift her a piece or we could get an easement so we could put our landscaping on hers or we wouldn't put our landscaping right up against hers. But the problem is, from a developer standpoint, is that if we were to make a, quote, deal with Mrs. Crowley, then, and let's say that said we're going to do ABC. Well, for all we know, the next person down goes, that, doesn't, that deal doesn't work for me. In fact, it it's a bad deal for me because it gives Mrs. Crowley and, and so that's why it's impossible right now to do it. I mean, and I, I understand it's not binding. I get that. Uh, but I also understand that we're here in good faith, having taken significant actions. Uh, it, we'll put it this way. It's credible. Anyway, I'll, I'll wait till the end for that. Okay. So, so basically, what you're getting at is that we should not uh, assume anything one way or the other about this. But for all intents and purposes, we should not be considering, you know, the, the willingness of a gift to the properties as anything inherent. That is to say that because it could change over time one way or the other. That's correct. I, the only thing you should assume is that there will be a site. If this is granted, there will be a site plan process and that those are the sort effects on the neighbors are are focused. Uh, during that process. All right, thank you. Um, got a got a question, and I, I think I'm okay to ask this because I asked before about the contract. Something's under contract. Is the current C2 property on 26, where the current gas station convenience store car wash exists, is that currently under contract? The, the whole parcel is under contract. To include the residential? Yeah, it, because it would be illegal to, to try to buy part of that property now because okay. it's not been subdivided. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so the, the commercial along with that residential, that whole block is currently under contract. Okay, That's I correct. just want to be clear. Okay, thank you very much. Um, who wants to go? Yes, sir. Uh, William Hutner, live at 6213 Walnut Avenue. Um, looking at, you know, this is first I've really heard about what's going on here, but looking at it, whether it's a car wash, that's moot. We, in any agreement, verbal agreement, in, in today's world, we know you can't do business on a handshake, period. You can't trust most people you do business with. They want to take this property, turn it into C2, which they buy it and that is their wish that is their wish I mean it's we live in a free country um, I'm not arguing for them I'm not arguing against them what I am trying to say is being that we're looking at turning this into a commercial property it can be used from anything from a shooting range to a fertilizer storage facility to all of the things that are listed here today they propose a car wash, maybe it is in good faith, maybe it is not, we do not know. 
So why would we take the only buffer available between the residential community there and turn it into a commercial property? That buffer is gone. And once it's gone, it's gone. You can't put commercial in the back at this point uh, where, the, where the homes are on Walnut. You may be able to down the road. I don't know. That's up to you guys. But if you take away that buffer, the crime rate in that area will go up. It will extend into Longmeadow uh, because there will be a, a way for people to get through there quickly and easily. Can they go through there now? Yes. Are they attracted to go through there at this point? Probably not as much if there, if there was a car wash there or some other business to draw them in. <laughs> I, don't, I think that's about all I have to say, so okay. um, thank you guys. Yeah, or, well, I apologize. Are there any questions? No um, questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've heard crime used a couple times. And uh, again, I would expect it's the owner would have the best insight. In those 64 car washes that you have, 64 plus, um, do you know or can you provide any insight on criminal activity within those 64? Is it a, you know, 5%? Is it a cost? Is it a, um, what, what is the impact of criminal activity? Now, I'm sharing this also knowing that down in Eldersburg, for everyone's sake, is what's considered District 9 uh, of our Sheriff Department. It is the lowest crime rate in Carroll County. Uh, very proud of that on how low our crime rate is overall in Carroll County. Um, and it's also because of very strong relationships between our community and our law enforcement. Um, so I'm just curious because I, I've heard this, you know, not just now but in other times about when something changes. But do you have any insight on that? I do not have any insight. I, okay. I would have to pull the organization, yeah. hire okay. probably a professional to properly, you know, assess okay. that impact. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that would be fair. John, if, if your convenience store or your car washes were getting armed Rob, I, mean, I know that's not only which if they were getting robbed you you'd know about it wouldn't you the organization would yes <laughs> yeah. okay thank you or at least you feel comfortable you would know yeah crunch one second sir yeah go ahead uh, thank you um, i just wanted this to is by the way this mark zimmerman on oh. yep he's yes. talking now <laughs> uh one thing i just wanted to bring up is that the mod wash brand is a cashless system so as far as robbing to get money, you'd have better chance at a gas station okay. than you would at a mod wash. Okay. Because uh, everything is card based. Yep, that, that that's fair. Okay. Sir, did you want to? Uh, just one question. If you can, come on up to the microphone. And again, it's uh, Mr. William Hutner. Hutner coming back. I, I don't think anyone is referring to the <laughs> car wash being robbed. We're referring to people loitering and going through the back of it into the neighborhoods with an easy way to take whatever they want, get it in their vehicle, and get out. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> Did you have a question? I'm yes. Yeah, I apologize. Um, was it for Mr. Hutner or was it for these? Um, I think um, these guys sitting here probably. Okay. And, but it, his topic made me want to ask. Will the site, at least the limits of the car wash, not the entire property, be fenced? I believe that's uh, the requirement, or whatever the site planning development process uh, restrictions would Answer be. Him. I'm sorry, sir. The, uh, if sure. I may, uh, we had we contemplated fencing the whole site, but we're not sure. Number one, that the the property owners would want it right on their back property line. Number two, we don't know if the county would allow it as part of the landscaping. Right. Uh, so the answer is we don't know, but there would be some fencing. Yeah. Um, 
a quick quick question to follow up to uh, Commissioner Kyler's question. So obviously you've got that strip back there that currently is uh, is open green space. From what I understand, it's is it just grass? Is that what what the uh, the space is back there? The, the people that acquired it appear to have placed structures on it, like garages and stuff. The strip. You're talking about the, that, the strip that, that, that disappeared? Strip. So, yeah, so that has garages on it? This well, I, went, I walked the site, and I went back to, you know, I'm not a surveyor, but I went back to the back and tried to see if I could see where that, you know, because you could see the houses coming up, you know, Mrs. Uh, Crowley's and the other ones. And then when you get up to the end, I tried to figure out where that was. It's got uh, at least one good-sized garage on it and something else. So uh, those people have owned that strip for or those properties for 50 years now they they put stuff on it so no it couldn't it's not open there is there is lawn part of it is lawn mm -hmm. okay so, so theoretically somebody could walk in the current situation from the uh it's a gas station if i remember correctly you could walk from the gas station parking lot through that space and then to the adjacent properties is that correct the residential properties you could literally walk through either way you could walk from liberty road all the way back but but not conveniently now because okay. I tried it and you have to I went in and talked to the cashier and said hey I'm gonna go back to your property I'm gonna get shot uh, and I w you have to go around the edge by the fences and then when you get back there you, you see it's kind of mucky back there but mm -hmm. and then you just see it uh, basically an open field with a trailer in it, it has some junky stuff in okay. it okay but yes, you could I, I walk from Liberty if, Road yeah. all the way back to the mm -hmm. back. What you couldn't do legally without trespassing is then get from there to Walnut Avenue. Okay. Yeah. You'd Correct. have to trespass on somebody's lawn sure. to get from there to sure. Walnut Avenue. I was just curious because under the context of what we're discussing here today about potential crime, and I'm not discounting that in any fashion, and, you know, to uh, Commissioner Rothstein's point, you know, crime is essentially very low in that area. Um, I was just curious, and I just wanted a better understanding of, realistically, if I'm trespassing on somebody's property and it's about crime, I could walk through right now mm -hmm. just as accessibly as I could, hypothetically, if that property was uh, modified in the future and redeveloped, and if that were left open, in theory. Granted, there's also a discussion of the possibility of putting a fence up or whatever landscaping requirements may be or may not be accessible which at that point is a total hypothetical right now i just wanted to clarify that it is technically accessible at this moment so it is yeah physically you can okay. get through there uh, i appreciate that yeah. with a pedestrian i appreciate yeah. that you may need boots but yeah okay no, i appreciate <laughs> um, that um okay um will there be security wait, one more will there be security cameras uh part of this installation yes we have security cameras throughout our uh, entire uh development Okay. Thank you. And again, it's uh, not necessarily to you, but again to the community. It's not discounting any comments. These are all very relevant and, um, you know, insightful, um, you know, definitely thought provoking for all of us, but, um, and definitely concern for the community that's bringing them up. So, okay. Thank you. Sir? Jane. <clears throat> James Brown, I live at 6211 Walnut Avenue, which is further down the street. This is my first time knowing of any meeting regarding the uh, purchase of the land. So I am in the neighborhood. I do um, concur with Bill and the two young ladies where I'm really tall. Um, <laughs> where crime would be an issue, and it's not necessarily that you can walk through. I can walk through from the gas station all the way down to Cherry if I wanted to. Yes, I'm gonna walk across somebody's property when I get to the end. It's really easy to get onto Walnut Avenue coming across from the shopping center. But when you put another establishment in there, a business, now you have more vehicles in there that can be getaway vehicles. So you can, easily walk down to my house, open my shed, take out what you want, come up, the, come up, walk through a lot, and get into a car and leave. Also, the traffic on 26, I like your idea of median strips, it takes me between two and seven minutes around four o'clock in the afternoon to make a left-hand turn into my street. Making a left-hand turn out of my street, I might as well take a half hour, 45 minutes. 
the deceleration lane to go into the gas station, non-existent. But the gas station has nowhere near currently the business that a car wash would bring in. So yes, it's going to increase traffic. Within one mile of the house, seven car washes with one more being developed right next to the Shell station. I don't need eight car washes, quite frankly. So no matter if it's a car wash or something else, a business is going to bring traffic in. It's going to bring in more time to get across the street because we know the median strip isn't coming anytime soon. So that's my perspective of it. And yes, I do live further down. It really doesn't affect me in that sense, but I'm here with my neighbors and standing up with them. We have a petition here. I do believe there's 42 signatures. Who would get it? Uh, you you can. I, there was okay. one emailed in. Provide it to uh, Mr. Burke, and I'll accept it. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, the, again, I've been working on this uh, the suicide lane issue on 26 um, since I started, and uh, it's very difficult. Um, you know, but I am working with uh, you know State Highway Administration. Um, your insight, again, you, but collectively means a lot because I'm working to convince them on the importance of getting rid of some of these suicide lanes uh, on 26 when you go from fast to slow to fast to slow between lights and uh, so I do appreciate that um, any questions or comments okay yeah sir mr. Brown um, sir. you know as you know, there's a shopping center, an active shopping center with Oscar's Ale House in it, located one property over from this property, correct? Yes, sir. And that property is adjacent or near that strip, though, that doesn't exist anymore that Commissioner Gordon asked about, does it not? The green strip? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And is that, does that shopping center have a fairly large parking lot? Um, the shopping center has a parking lot that's too small for the businesses there, yes. Okay. And so that fills up with cars? It certainly does. Has the neighborhood have prop crime problems related to people uh, uh, from that parking lot inf infiltrating your neighborhood? Have I had state police helicopters fly over my property numerous times? Yes, sir. Well, do they fly over your property numerous times because there were criminals or criminal activity related to that parking lot? I don't know whether it was related to that parking lot or not, okay. but I do know that they were looking for the person that ran from left to right, and that parking lot was part of, this is where they started, and they're coming back through. So I can't say whether it started there. It was just a nice path for them to get through. Okay, so, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Anything? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and provide it to Mr. Burke. That'd be great. Thank, um, you, thank you. We'll call that who's next. Neighbor one. Anybody? Oh, right. please come on up. Clark. Yeah. Oh, Hi, yeah. Nancy Lynch. I live at six five zero three Carroll Highlands Road. And I'm imploring you to take a little time to think about this before you vote. I know you could vote today, but if did you just get this staff recommendation today? The the staff rec the staff recommendation was made December thirteenth. Okay. The planning commission recommendation was made December thirteenth, I okay. believe. So um, we we've been aware of this. Um, and then it's a process going to where we are right now. Okay. Are you sure you're in the right meeting? I know. I'm not going to mention just, that other okay. issue. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I, everything being prevent, presented is from the developer point of view. I'm imploring you to consider homeowners' property rights. This is a picture from the county website that shows Walnut Street. It shows the, the houses and how close they are to the property line. These people bought their homes 
with the understanding that nothing would be built behind them because it's zoned residential. When you buy your house, it's one of the biggest considerations and decisions you make in your life. Not only will property values decrease if you have a car wash right behind you, I doubt they'll ever be able to sell their home, sorry. Um, in the December 13th Planning Commission meeting, one of the members, and I think it was Mr. Lester, said, why doesn't the fact that it's zoned R20 carry as much weight as the need to change it to C2? And I think the answer for Mr. Schaefer, well, we have to do what is most economically feasible. Again, you're just considering developers. In the Freedom Comprehensive Plan on page three, government will not attempt to fundamentally transform communities against the will of existing homeowners and residents. And on page 207, it talks about remaining sensitive to the rights of all property owners and citizens. So just briefly, think about the people who live here. These kind of services are being built to provide service to the community. If nobody wants it, you have to consider the people's wishes as well. Thank you. Can um, I apologize? Stay, stay up for a second. You have a question? Oh, no. Um, if, uh, oh, do you? No. Um, that picture of the houses, yeah. um, if we can have that as well, if it's up to you and we'll, yeah. we'll accept that and also if Mr. Schaefer wants to see it, he's more than happy to. No, I, I can tell what it is. Thank yep. you. Um, no objection. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, you you and I have had conversations uh, plenty of times, and we're going to have more uh, in the near future. Um, and uh, what you're sharing is about community rights and community homeowners' rights. I mean, that's your your focus on this. Uh, you brought up uh, the Planning Commission's um, decision. It was open, um, not necessarily for you, but for Linda. Was it obviously now not a unanimous decision or moving forward, or was it? Do you remember? I don't recall the vote. Okay. Um, I remember. It, it was unanimous. Oh, it was unanimous, so Mr. Lester's answers or questions were answered, and then it was unanimous. Okay. Um, and I appreciate in every for the good of everyone the Freedom Plan, uh, which is from 2018, uh, is the guidelines that allows us to move forward in the Freedom District. Um, so I appreciate you pointing that out as well. Um, any questions or comments, Mr. Schaefer? No, no, uh, okay. no, no, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions that folks want to make at this time? Okay, um, I apologize. Chris, is there anyone on the phone? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think now in uh, closing, do you want to make any closing comments? I do, thank you very much. Appreciate your time uh, today on this case. Um, the piecemeal rezoning process, as has been explained to you, and I won't go over the details, but basically the change mistake is a gate, and it's a gate you have to come through, the, the applicant, the petitioner. And then when you come through that gate, now you're in zoning land and what's, you know, what's, what's the proper zoning for this property. Uh, so I would submit to you that we're clearly through the gate. This is an obvious mistake. It's, it's a mistake that bears directly on the, on the decision to zone this R20. It was clearly zoned. No, I'll, I'll say this, you know, I hope it doesn't make anybody angry, but no planner in their right mind would take a piece of land behind a gas station that didn't have any access except through the gas station and say, let's make it residential. We've got a nice area here, and we want to encourage good 
proper, well-done residential development. That's part of our goal of our planning and zoning system. So we're just going to take this piece. Make they made it R20 clearly. I would uh, uh, clearly. I'm going to guess, uh, educated guess, that it was made R20 for two reasons. One, they felt like it could be developed R20, and two, they were sensitive to these neighbors. I think they they knew that because those those lots uh, that the the adjoiners are on, that's one of the oldest subdivisions in Eldersburg. All right, there's 7,500 square foot lots. Okay, try to get those down there these days, uh, and and try. But anyway, so there's clearly a mistake. Now we get on to the next question: Is what's the proper zone for this property? Now, nobody on my side of the aisle is denigrating or disputing the interest of these property owners. They clearly are stakeholders. They clearly have a dog in the hunt. Uh, they're clearly affected by this. But, and I, again, I'll, I'll say, that, but their property rights should not extend to preventing the neighbor's property rights from being utilized in accordance with the public health, safety, and welfare. Um, uh, I don't know what the real estate agents told people when they bought property, because I hear this all. Every real estate agent I ever heard about in these hearings told these told people that don't worry, that farmer will never develop. <laughs> you know, and they come into the hearing and they go, yeah, that's what they told. I went, well, and I asked them. I said, well, you bought you bought 7,500 square feet. Did you think you had control over that other field? No. Now, this comes to you on the issue of what the proper zoning is with a unanimous recommendation from the Planning Commission, uh, supported by the Planning Staff Report, which says this is the proper zoning for this property. Um, now, I know that we've, and I think properly, we've gotten into the car wash here. And I think, you know, it's, it's the elephant in the room, for goodness sake. And yes, it's true. Theoretically, we could try any C2 use back there, or whoever buys it, or whoever the property owner could try any C2 use. But it is it is a mis mistake. It's a mis no, I call it a mistake. It's a mistake to think that you just look down to C2 uses, and the one gentleman, and I know he just threw it out, but he said shooting range. Okay, you can't put a shooting range on there. There's a 200 foot distance requirement for a shooting range from any residential lot. You'll find that a lot of these horror story uses would never fit or be eligible for this, this piece of ground because of its location, its depth, its width, uh, its environmental constraints. So, so what, do you, what do you have before you? You have a master plan quoted in the staff report that says, recommendation one, look for opportunities to increase the amount of land in commercial and light industrial dis districts in areas targeted for economic development. Well, the Liberty Road corridor, I mean, that's, I remember uh, the guy used to work over here, late, late Frank Schaefer worked in public works, and when the county made their new deal with Baltimore City on Liberty Reservoir 10, 12 years ago, Frank said, well, Eldersburg is now the Saudi Arabia of water in Carroll County, <laughs> uh, which was true. There's, it's the place where development can and should occur. And this corridor is, is a home run for it. It goes on to say, objective two, focus on the growth of existing businesses and employment retention, as well as attracting new commercial industrial enterprises. You know, you're, you're sitting here in your governmental capacity deciding what's good and bad. It's not, I, I'll, I'll submit, if I was one of those people that lived on there, I'd say this is bad. And I will submit, I might agree to them. I, I don't think I'd like it either. But that's not, the, that's not the end of the story. There's other interest and rights here of the property owner, the people that live in the larger area, the citizens of Carroll County. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen the site. I know Commissioner Rothstein's seen it because he's probably on that. But anyway, it's, it's in need of redevelopment. Uh, and that redevelopment will create economic opportunities, uh, tax dollars, employment, and it's in a proper place. 
right on Liberty Road in the midst of a whole line of commercial development. I think, I, I hope we've sh proven to you that the existing site is just not, not capable of supporting a nicer commercial development. And especially when you take that 30 feet out, if you, for, if you don't rezone this, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but the, this deal's not going to happen, I'll tell you that, because it runs through the existing building. My people can't fit it on there. But somebody sometime might take a shot at R20 back there with, now, what kind of R20? Uh, I mean, I know you can sell houses to, you know, there's a market out there, and Liberty Road, Ellersburg is a desirable area, but it's not going to be the, the kind of housing stock you're, you're getting down in Eldersburg now, I can tell you that, because they're going to have a driveway off Liberty Road uh, with, as these people rightly say, uh, trying to make a left out of that driveway. You know, you, you want to buy a nice house and you, you, you want to make a left on Liberty Road? Uh, not from your driveway, but, and by the way, you've got, a, a, I guess, a gas station where you, you've got some kind of commercial in front of you. Um, I think we've shown that without this rezoning, we've got a virtually unusable uh, piece of ground, both pieces. The R20 is almost unusable. Um, and on top of that, I'll, 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 I'll say one last one thing, if I can find my serious notes here. While I can't win an argument where your comeback is, Clark, theoretically, you can put anything on there. Because I can't argue with that, C2, or if, I, if you give me the rezoning. But I can tell you, and I hope you, I hope you agree, that this is not a casual thing that we just came in and said, let's make a shot at this. I mean, we've taken a look at what it would fit. Uh, they're contract purchasers. They paid money. I can tell you they've spent money on me, and I know they've spent money on Mark Zimmerman. Uh, and that's just the beginning of what they're going to spend to go through. So, I, I mean, I'm, I think you can count on uh, uh, this being a, uh, a responsibly done. I'm not going to say that people are going to like it, because I, I don't think if, I mean, it's going to be a, a little further back on the, on the uh, parcel, the car wash. But if this is developed, if this is granted, it is almost for certain that this development will go through your site development process, perhaps end up with a good result for some of the neighbors. Again, I can't promise that here today uh, um, for obvious reasons. So we believe we've clearly met the legal criteria uh, and we, and supported by the Planning Commission, uh, and we also believe that we've made a, a good case why the rezoning of this property is in the best interest of Carroll County. I'm not going to argue it's in the best interest of these people because I can't say that. But it's in the best interest of Carroll County and its planning and zoning uh, situation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate it. And Commissioner Vigliotti, appreciate it. Uh, and uh, uh, hope we can get a, a favorable uh, uh, rezoning here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sir, unless it's something very specific to what was just shared. It's um, very specific. Okay, come on up. <clears throat> I just have one question. Why is the error from residential, from commercial to residential, instead of residential to commercial, um, take the residential all the way to Liberty Road. It's an entrance now to extra houses. Why is it always the mistake to have residential there and make everything commercial? Look at right across the street, you've got a nice big commercial lot. Okay. Yep. And no, I, I understand uh, what, what, what you're saying. Um, are there any comments? right now um well i'll make one I'll make a few uh, first of all i want to thank if you came here to attend this public session and speak i commend you for that it is hard 
to keep up with these types of issues. I understand that you're working, you've got things to do, and now you're sitting here all day long so you can speak for a couple minutes on an issue that you may have just found out about, you may not have, but it is very hard to keep up with these issues. I spent four years on the Planning and Zoning Commission. I can appreciate how hard it is. I mean, we, we've talked about, we've used the community word a lot. I mean, I do see a community in here. I see an R20,000 community. I see a lot of yellow. It looks like a lot of houses. It looks like there's a lot of people with backyards and kids and things like that. So I think we're talking about a community already. I think it already exists. You know, I've been driving through Eldersburg since 1984. I mean, it's a, it, it can be a crowded area. Uh, I mean, I've been, that's a long time. And uh, I can understand how, I, I have a hard time understanding how this project helps that situation, but maybe there's some mitigating factors there with traffic and that, uh, and that will be uh, something we, that may eventually happen. But this is a really difficult issue because we don't have a way of guaranteeing this is something that doesn't just completely blow up that neighborhood. That's the problem here. I mean, we talked a lot, we talked probably way too much about what might be here, but we, we don't know that. So that's why these issues are so difficult because you are affecting people's lives. We never really look at the human factors involved when we talk about a lot of things in government. That's been apparent to me in the past eight weeks. So that, that's what really is the issue here. It's not about car washes. Um, it's not about the rezoning as much as it is about the people back there. And this, uh, I, you, you have to believe people when they say it's going to have a negative effect on their neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, it sounds like you've made the best of what you've got back there. Yeah, you've been on some, you've been on this lot back there and you put a swing and said, good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did that. Um, hopefully it was okay. It sounds like it was. So that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I do know the area, and I appreciate, uh, Mr. Schaefer, your, uh, your thoughts, your comments, um, and your support to um, those that you represent. And, gentlemen, I appreciate your thoughts as well. Um, a few things come to mind, and it's, it's uh, very similar uh, to Commissioner Guerin is um, it's about community. I, I, I hate the word constituency, I, I'm, and I'm learning to hate it even that much more. Uh, it's about neighbors, it's about friends, it's about community, and community um, has rights. Property owners have rights. Community has rights. And um, I've seen uh, over the last four years some commercial properties that have failed to get past um, the first stages because of different you know issues that they may have and then they either sit idle or they turn a different direction um, so understanding that something's under contract like I've seen properties under contract have then broken those contracts because they have failed to move to the next step and um, they then look at the book and say okay what else can we do besides um, and, uh, and that is concerning. Um, I, it's not clear to me that there was a mistake that was made. Um, you have commercial along the east and west of commercial that exists right now. The depth, um, you have walnut with residential. And somebody talked about a buffer. I see a buffer as well um, of residential. Um, there um, I am concerned about the you know I, I, I appreciate business men and women making decisions that is in the best interest of their business and looking at business model because people say why are we building another gas station or why do we have a, another nail salon or another pizza joint or another whatever it's because people do their homework and make the decision to build appropriately and you know that that's their decision so I'm not questioning that um, so the eight car wash I, I get that but um, uh, that's not the concern it's it's besides the a business that may or may not fail which I would never want a business to fail especially in our community uh, but just getting to the business <laughs> um, 
is a concern. Um, a lot of the community, you know, we already have a lot on our plate. I'm 26, and I'm very concerned. I'm not nearly as concerned about this the, the crime uh, because I, I know I speak with the sheriff and the community as much as I can. And if there is crime, I, I'm telling you right now, if there is criminal activity, please report it. The only way we can get uh, more um, attention brought down to the community from our sheriff is if it's reported. And uh, he will be the, you know, the first to back me on that. But, uh, you know, I hear a lot, this happened or that happened. Please, and even if it's a fender bender, what, report it so we know. Uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, I don't think we're going to get much further. Uh, I don't think we're going to get much further in, um, you know, discussion. Um, I we're not going to get any more input. We have it. We have a lot of input. Um, and to me, it's just because you can doesn't mean you should. We talked about that the other week about solar and we're having further discussions about that. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Um, so I am, <clears throat> I, I know we can wait a week and, and or we can make a decision now and enforce it in 10 days. Uh, I don't know what a week will do um, in holding off because there's no further conversations that I can see. Um, gentlemen, like I said, you made a lot of very salient points. Uh, I still don't understand why you wouldn't be able to conform to the existing property or modify the mod wash to what is existing. Um, and looking at that uh, existing property, um, <clears throat> except for that storm water management, which is a significant concern. Um, I like the, uh, the intent of gifting back. Um, that is definitely a community approach. Um, which I always appreciate. But I'm weighing property owners' rights. I'm looking at the Freedom Plan. I'm looking at community rights. Um, and you weigh it all. And I think the good part about this is we're a quasi, <laughs> right? Not quasi until we keep going, but um, in our approach. And, uh, but we have a responsibility. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to move forward. Um, I I just don't understand why we wouldn't right now move forward, uh, and keeping the property as is, um, and not granting the uh, the change from C2 to or from residential to C2 uh, beyond what exists today. So that's my motion. That I'm putting out there right now. And that you'd be closing the public hearing. And closing the public hearing. So understood? Uh, Commissioner? Yeah, please. Commissioner Rossi, could you restate, could you restate your uh, your motion? Because I had a little difficulty. I apologize. I had a little difficulty. I, I, doubt I, I doubt I can because it was relatively clumsy, but I am, um, I am making a motion at this time to uh, not um, allow the uh, residential property to be rezoned as commercial two and closing the public hearing. I'll second that motion. Okay. I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? And I think it warrants discussion. Please. Um, two things. Um, Firstly, I think <clears throat> the gentleman deserves an answer to his question, and you're going to tell me if I'm oversimplifying or not, but I do strongly believe there was a mistake in the zoning, and the fact that it can't all change to R20 
is probably the existence of the gas station and the business that's currently on the front property. Am I correct? And if not, please answer his question. Um, well, so, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into play, sure. and a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, the planning process initially as it starts. So at any point in time, anything can change to any type of property but we typically look at that as our commercial corridor so from that perspective we look at that frontage especially being more commercially oriented than residential community but that could change in the future just we'd have to go through a process just like we're doing today okay thanks and and then my part of the discussion I I think I feel a I'd love another week B um, currently I I feel like there's not enough room in that front parcel to do much much of a kind of a business and I could get into property that I thought would sell five years ago that's still sitting there because it's commercial and too small um, but the the part that that bugs me the most is the R20 we're pretty much maybe being handed but if not creating pretty much a landlocked residential zoning spot that well I don't know maybe kids can play in it or somebody can cut down the trees and mow it but we're, we're creating a property that's that's unusable and and I have a problem with that you know but at, out of 1.9 acres with everything we have I mean I I know it's 1.9 acres that may not have the ability to be used but um, yeah. there's it, it provides a buffer. You're looking out at a community. Um, you don't, you know, it's that it's that front yard mentality or backyard mentality that we talked about a week ago regarding solar. Um, and uh, so that I'm, I'm kind of weighing it the same way. And I, I understand having the opportunity to mull it over. I just I've been mulling this over for quite some time um, and receiving the emails, reading them. Uh, listening to folks I don't know what a week is going to be able to do but yeah, that's yeah. that's me so I'm not sure what other information can be provided so well I think first and foremost um, again echo some of my fellow commissioners I want to thank everybody that on both sides of uh, this topic for coming out today and to Commissioner Garen's point it is very difficult to find time to come into these meetings at, at times and be aware of them um, for a variety of reasons. I do have to echo uh, Commissioner Kyler, though. I do think after looking over the details, I do think it's a zoning mistake. I don't think there's a, uh, a debated question on that. Um, I do think it's a challenge to what, what do we do with a, uh, a parcel of land that's essentially landlocked if it's left as is. I understand the uh, concerns of the parties living behind it. I understand the concerns of the uh, commercial property owners and what they want to potentially may or may not do with that property today or 20 years from now. Um, I also understand the concept of, well, what's, what's a week going to do? Well, a week might not do anything, but I think the only thing a week does allow is it would allow us a little more time to look at this issue and maybe we'll agree to disagree on whether that should occur or not. but. Uh, given the significance of both a potential zoning mistake, which I do believe it is, and also the fact that we have a landlocked piece of land, um, personally, I'd rather wait a week and make a decision at that point. So I'll add something to that. I mean, we do have a motion on the table, so we'll have to vote on it. I, I, I understand uh, Commissioner Kyler and Commissioner Gordon's concerns, but I think we're looking for a way out of this that doesn't exist. The question on the table is pretty straightforward. It's do you rezone or not? I, I alluded to this earlier when I spoke. I wish there was another way. I wish there was a more dynamic way to deal with these types of issues where, well, wait a minute, what, what if we do rezone it, but we're only going to look at these types of uses? Or in this case, now we're looking at a quote unquote landlocked piece of land that is or not, you know, it belongs to somebody, but it may essentially remain worthless to a certain degree. Those are unfortunate circumstances. I wish there was another way to go about this. That's why it's so hard sometimes when you sit up here, you gotta make yes or no decisions. Uh, but we do have a motion on the table to close the public hearing and to deny the request, if I'm not mistaken. So let's um, take them one at a time. Is that okay? 
I mean, uh, or is it the same? The, technically, the I mean, motions I, I for both. It, I put it for it's both. two motions in one, though, technically. Yeah, it is two motions in it's one. It's a closed public so, hearing first. Yeah, so why, why don't we start with that? And I apologize, because I feel like I did do two at once. Uh, so if it's okay with you, Commissioner Vigliotti, um, the first motion is to close the public hearing. Uh, yes, I will, I will consent to that amendment. Okay, so motion and a second to close public hearing. Any further discussion on that? Close the public hearing in the record. And the record. In the record. In the record. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Agreed, Commissioner Figliotti? Agreed, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on that? Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's five. Now, the motion and the, on the table and the second is to um, not allow for the rezoning. Um, to deny the request um, rezoning from C from residential to C2 and it was seconded by Commissioner Vigliotti is there any further discussion on that uh, yeah I'd just like to make a, a few quick points if I might if that's okay please um, thank you very much so um, you know I, I you know listen to, to both sides of this um, I, and I certainly understand, uh, you know, where each side is coming from regarding this. I mean, I certainly want to associate myself with the comments that Commissioners Rossi and, and uh, Garen have made, uh, especially as it relates to community. And uh, I think they're both right when, you know, we talk about how, uh, you know, in our approach to things, the idea of community, the idea of, of individual human beings being parts of those community uh, communities often uh, uh, gets forgotten about. And I. One of the things that was really interesting interesting to me over the course of this discussion, and I know that you know a lot of this goes back into our, our I guess you could call our common law heritage, my customs, traditions, and then things that, that happen naturally uh, over time, that happen organically over time. And uh, you know to hear um, that certain residents have had you know these these uh, you know non legal agreements with the the current property owner to to take their yard out a little bit further or to put in a a swing set just a little bit over the line. You know, there's there's certainly uh, customary intentionality there between the existing property owner and the residential property owners in that area for, I guess you can consider it a kind of common use of that area. Um, so I'm, I'm not necessarily sure outside of a purely legally positivistic uh, aspect that, uh, you know, that that property is necessarily useless. Um, you know, and, and, and understanding that it is in a growth area and understanding that there's a lot of commercial development over there as well. There's also a lot of residential development over there as well, uh, in addition to that. And so when I'm looking at the way that use of that property has, uh, uh, you know, existed organically over time, how it's naturally grown between people who live there and people who work there, and, and looking at the fact that, you know, we there are those traffic concerns. There are, you know, in my mind, there are legitimate uh, concerns with crime. Uh, that it only makes sense that we you know deny the the reclassification you know again the 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 environment as it exists there has grown naturally over time um and i think that from that perspective from approaching it from from understanding the community um that that you know just it makes sense not to to go ahead and rezone um i uh you know, again and the other thing i keep going back to as well is i understand that that you know you're not going to put a firing range in there or something of that sort either um, but, you know, as of this moment, I don't have a list of any of the viable businesses that would fit into that area. And so when you take that into account, in addition to the community concerns, as well as the, the custom with the community that has developed there on, on its own, organically, naturally, again, I think that, the, you know, the decision is as simple as that we simply do not rezone. Um, and, and again, I we also want to say thank you to everybody who has come out. And, and again, this is no... This is nothing negative toward the, the people who want to, to you know develop the land or to put a business in there. I'm I'm certainly not opposed to that whatsoever. To to businesses wanting to succeed, uh, but as has been noted already, the question is just because we can does it does it necessarily mean that we should? Um, and, uh, and and that's uh, yeah, that's basically where I stand on it. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Kyler. And and just one more comment and and. Uh, it's a great group I'm serving with, and, and I respect everybody's opinions. I hope you don't take it the opposite way. And I want to thank everybody here 
And uh, in today's world, I think it's giant that this group came here in opposition to each other and everybody was cordial and polite and spoke well, um, you know, and, and I really appreciate that. I don't like constituents either. I like community. But businesses, engineers, even attorneys, even mm -hmm. elected officials are part of our community and yep. we need to look at the whole community. Absolutely. Am I missing anything there, Mr. Burke? Uh, I have a motion, I have a second. No, uh, just a reminder that this, uh, if you deny this uh, rezoning petition, th another one can't be submitted for an additional two years? I think it's two years. Mm -hmm. Two years. On this particular time. Okay. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You say aye? Nope, no. Wait, wait, I, I apologize. Did you say? Aye. That's an aye, yes. Okay. I'm opposed. Against? Okay, three, two. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'll give it a minute for folks to leave if they'd like. And then we're gonna finish up with uh, open admin. While we're waiting, um, so we were supposed to start uh, briefings at one. Um, this is all uh, work. Sort of alerted people that we probably wouldn't be starting until two. Can okay. I make that Which official that we won't start until two? Thank and you. Okay, that sounds good to me. Okay. I can eat a power bar and coffee. We've um, lost. I guess this is sort of good and bad news um, due to um, family concerns of two different um, staff members. There will be two less presentations. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Is Director Robinson one of them? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anything for open admin? I just, um, meant, like I said, Mako was really good, and <clears throat> I want to make sure that I, along with uh, Commissioner Kyler, I want to speak for him, but that if there are issues that you want us to carry down there, um, let us know. Uh, also, um, the rural uh, meeting is on Monday evenings and everybody's welcome to attend them. Uh, it's, I think, six to eight, <laughs> so it's not the most convenient time. Um, but, you know, everybody's welcome and if you are interested, uh, we'll get you, make sure you have the Zoom, you know, whatever, dial up. Uh, but, um, you know, and it's really the same thing with MAKO. Uh, the legislative meetings that occur, um, their Zoom, really everybody's welcome to watch. I mean, uh, you know, it, it just has one voting, you know, but it's not one or the other. Um, but it may be a value for you to watch um, to see who the staff is and the value that they bring. Um, for the uh, for us, and if they don't bring anything for us, that we know that as well. Um, I just want to share that because I, I want to make it clear that anything that we're doing is is available. Um, and, and I think yeah. um, through the presentation today and uh, Mike shares with everybody, I yeah. think everybody's seeing all the bills. If if yeah. you want us to flip emails or flip a list of bills, just holler because yeah. uh, it, it's good and. Uh, I mean, the significant pieces are focusing on county autonomy, which I really like uh, <clears throat> across the board. That's been a real push. Um, staying away from uh, taxes, um, uh, except tax credits, um, and then staying away <coughs> from the state trying to shove something down our throat for a year or two, and then us having to foot the bill years later. So, you know, those kind of unwanted grants or opportunities that can turn into uh, unfunded requirements are things that we've been trying to stay away from as, as a whole. Okay. Um, agendas. Uh, thanks. Um, you can sign that if you want. Uh, <clears throat> okay, you ready? Uh, February 6th, Monday evening, Commissioner Kyler and I uh, the Rural County Coalition Bill Review. 
And then February 7th, Commissioner Guerin has his town hall uh, at the Mount Airy Senior Center at 6.30. But doors open at 6, you said. That is correct. Doors open at 6, and 6.30 is the town hall. 7 p.m. is the Ag Center board meeting, which I will be attending in Westminster. Wednesday, uh, Commissioner Kyler will be participating in the Maryland uh, MACO Education Subcommittee, and I'll be doing the uh, tax subcommittee at 9 o'clock. At 9.30 is the legislative uh, committee with Commissioner Kyler and I. Um, and then at 5 p.m., the Board of Education, this is on February 8th, uh, will be doing their FY24 preliminary budget adoption. Um, they had one speaker last night, and that was it. Yeah. Anybody so. want to attend? Um, anybody available to attend? Uh, I'm not. Where are we? Where, Vigliotti? Where are we again? <laughs> Wednesday. On Wednesday, okay. February 8th. We need watch the at 5 p.m. What is what are the details? It's a 5 p.m. Board of Education uh, board meeting, FY24 preliminary budget adoption <coughs> on Wednesday, February 8th. I will check my schedule. Okay, well, just let us know. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> we will try to have someone participate. Uh, Thursday, open session. Um, a library exploration commons funding. Acceptance of the FY24 Shelter and Transitional Housing Facility Capital Loan. FY23 Second Quarter Budget Update, Mr. Zaleski will presenting. Presentation of Citizen's Guide to Carroll County Zoning Districts and Illustrated <laughs> Guide to Zoning Department of Planning. Okay. That's actually what you were just, this. that's this? Yes. So they'll be reviewing oh. this with you. You just got a preview yeah. copy. This so is really nice. Save it for next week. <laughs> I, I'd save say a it, tree and save this. For very impressive. Uh, I like what they packaged. This is very nice. Um, uh, the rezoning that is now not necessary. Item six, briefing of the 2024 Consolidated Transportation Priority Letter. Um, if we can get a copy prior to Thursday, Okay. That would be helpful for all of us, um, so it's not first seen. Well, you'll, I you'll have, have it on Friday, mm -hmm. but have you have it already. That? Okay, we'll get it to you. She has yeah. it already. Okay, but you'll Thank have you. it on Friday. Um, and then at 1 p.m. we have uh, some updates from public safety department. These of are the yeah. These are the agriculture these board of elections. Department of Planning and Target mm -hmm. Community and Educational Services. Friday, Saturday, we have nothing scheduled. Sunday, I have the podcast. On Monday, the uh, MACO Rural County Coalition Bill Review. Again, Commissioner Kyler and I. Tuesday, the Community College Board of Trustees. Carol, um, at 8.30 in the morning. I guess we're all attending for Valentine's Day. Um, Wednesday, February 15th, Commissioner Kyler and I will be involved with MACO, Community College Board of Trustees meeting. Who attends that? Who attends Board of Trustees? I think it's Commissioner Gordon, isn't it? I don't know. No, no, not, not for community. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. The, the, community, the, the community college. Are you Commissioner Kyler? The, I don't remember. The 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday is all of us, like yeah. a joint meeting with right. them. I think 5 p.m. on Wednesday is their regular yeah. Yeah. meeting. Do you attend it's that? On that I've been going oh, to that. Commissioner Kyler attends that. That's Thank you. Um, and then ESAC uh, at 7 p.m., Commissioner Guerin, I would expect, there you are, is attending that. Um, Thursday. <clears throat> presentation of bus patrol program okay uh, with Sheriff DeWeese um, next is a request approval for annual plan for fiscal year 2023 Bureau of Housing to be displaced for 45 days uh, from DCS rezoning case number 228 that's right we're going back we just finished 229 Eldersburg investors the second LLC um, 
In the afternoon, we will have land resource management, um, Shepherd Pratt. We get some from Shepherd Pratt. I didn't it know that. It used to be called Mosaic. Okay, Mosaic. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, circuit Court with Judge Hecker, and then um, State's Attorney's Office, Mike Stewart. Uh, and then on um, Saturday, February 18th, Commissioner Garen will be attending the uh, Ribbon Cutting for Homes for Our Troops uh, key ceremony. And Commissioner Vigliotti will have his eloquent podcast on Sunday, February 19th. Did I miss anything, Ms. Wanda? Okay. Anything else for the good of the group? If not, I need a recess till 2 p.m. Make a motion to recess till 2 p.m. I'll second, second. it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Joe, there you go. <laughs> okay.